welcome to this man stack amazing course which is going to teach you how you can get started with a expense tracking application like this from scratch and deploy it to the netlify for the react and heroku for the node.js mern stack is a combination of mongodb react express and node so mongodb is the database we are using here inside this we will going to use the mongoose package for the node.js then on the react side yes react is there plus we have the material design for the designing and react redux for managing the state along with that we are using the express js from the mern thing e for express we are using on the node js to create our server and creating all the apis for authentication we are using the jwt and using the passport package for the middleware and doing lot of things let's first see what we are going to create in this course and then we will deep dive into the structure of this course so you can see this is the home page the expenser and it's deployed on the netlify and the backend is also deployed on the heroku and it is directly connected to the mongodb and mongodb atlas so you can see i have the expense of august and this is a nice little graph of uh, this expenses and showing all the expenses i did on particular month this is the aggregation and grouping from the mongodb then we have a nice little form for the transaction so let's try to add another transaction and if i say 100 or maybe 1000 for movie 2 and this is for today click on server hmm category server it should be fun so you can see on the right side we have this category tab that means if i click on category we can create new category and let's say fun and this is just a icon thing i have created which is not using but i just want to show you that how you can connect different different things on categories so click on submit and it will going to add the the category on our list once we have this list of the category that means we have it and now once again we can go and say movie 2 and this is for the fun and that's good click on submit and very soon it will be available here as a movie 2 and since this is updated our graph is now also updated because now in the september i have spent 1210 rupees so this is the list of all the transaction we did and it's for the august then we have for september you can sort it in any way you want but if you don't like anyone you can easily go click on delete it says are you sure i say yes and finally it says deleted and it is removed and graph is also updated 1200 instantly and that one is removed from this list okay but what about if i say this is going to be the new movie instead of movie 2 and if i click on update this is going to update with movie 2 to new movie and obviously that is staying the same because we have just updated the name but we can also update the price and if i say update that's going to update it to 2000 and you can see now september expenses is raised to 2200 that is not the end yet because we are logged in what if i click on log out you can see i'm redirected to the sign in page and expenser that means the all the expenses i cannot access if i try to access category i cannot do that because these two are protected routes now let's try to sign in and sign in here which the account i have already created and you can see i am directly on my home page now once again click on log out and try to register register as bitfumes and s and uh, let's say abcd at gmail.com and not abcd let's call it bitfumes at gmail.com and password is password click on sign up and once this is sign up 
is done we are redirected to the sign in page and now we can do the login with the credential we have created the account and now you can see we are back with no transaction and nothing even there is categories available hmm so whenever you log in or so whenever you create new account on this app this app will give you some of the demo categories you can edit these categories and make it as your own if you want so it is now updated and then you can add another transaction for anything you say popcorn and i say this is fun once again submitted once it is submitted it is added to the list and graph is populated isn't it looks super duper amazing application from beginning to application deployment is all for you if you like this video i'm going to share amazing tips and tricks related to mern stack and the best comment will be treated as a prize money or not money but prize for some kind of course free course that will be only be available once we reach 1000 plus likes on this course so make sure you hit like and comment below about your view about this course or anything the best comment will be chosen after we reach the 1000 like let's see in depth of what exactly this course is including and what is the structure of this course now let's see what now let's see what we are going to learn in this course so we will going to start with setting up the mern stack that means the react and the express node.js application then we need to add the mongodb atlas and connect that with our express after that we will work on the creating the first transaction form and then handling the cores and adding the node mon why we are doing this you will see in this course after this we will start with the api body parser once again what is this and why we are using it inside the course we will do the first transaction from the form and store it in the database after that we need to fetch all the transaction we have completed inside the database and show it on our application on the front end react side after that we can start with react routes so that we can have a dedicated routes for different different api endpoints we have for the designing part we will use the material ui which is going to give you the design you have just saw on that demo after that we will do the designing for the form with the material ui then we submit the form and create the transaction table design so all these things related to the material design after that we will try to delete the transaction and create the api for the delete transaction and do the delete on the front end also after delete we will complete the crud part of the transaction by designing the update part and then updating the api that means creating the update api for the transactions after that we will use the react router dom to have the different routing system on the front end on the react side not on the express then we will do the registration form create the registration form and actually perform the registration form by creating the register api on the express side storing the user with the hashed password inside of the mongodb then once we have the user we will use the jwt to create a token from the login detail of the user and then return that jwt token to the front end now using that jwt token we can authenticate the user and for that we will going to use the password uh, passport library for the express.js so then we will use the passport jwt strategy for the authentication now at this point we were all using the endpoints and the secrets and the keys all inside the hard-coded thing we need to move that on the .env file on both sides on the front end that means the react and the node side then after that we will use the top level component to create the middleware for our react site so that if user is not logged in that user will not be able to visit any protected route after that we will just 
say how we can validate a JWT token so that every time user doing something that token has to be valid and then we can say that user is logged in finally after that we will use the react redux store so that we will manage all the state on our react side that will be helpful after that we will create the auth store for the react and then we will clear the express and node application by creating the controllers in our application then we will use the transaction of the users that means the transaction only for the logged in user we don't want to show all the transaction we have in the database so then we will do that after that we will work on the categories for the transaction we will add the category then we will do all the crud part of the category and finally the most exciting and the amazing part is adding the graph monthly graph aggregating the data as a month monthly and then finally deploying our application to the heroku for node.js and netlify for react i believe this is the best course available on the youtube or in the internet to learn about the mern stack from scratch to the deployment if you like this video hit thumbs up and subscribe to bitfumes youtube channel don't forget to do that because bitfumes channel is having a lot of amazing courses you will going to love from these collections so make sure you subscribe and let's now start with the mern stack to get started with our mern projects we have created this mern project directory which is empty now let's create two directory which is one for the client and another for the server so i will create a client and another i will create server and now what i will do i will open the client with vs code like this or if you want you can directly open this mern project full project in vs code and then you will find these two uh, directories here okay so the very first thing we have to do is we have to first go into the client directory from the terminal and then create a new react project for that once we have say that cd into the client and like that and then we say npx create react app and then we need to call our app but since we want this project to be created inside the client directory instead of giving the name we can just say dot and then if i hit enter you will see it's going to create the react app in our client now it's asking for some permissions so let's say yes and then wait for some time to complete this and now you can see the react application is done so we can simply say npm run start and it's going to run our project on localhost 3000 and here we have the react application but since we also need to work on the server so let's create another tab in here inside the vs code go inside the server and then first since we need to create the javascript project we will say npm init and give the y flag so that it will not going to ask me any question and once we are done with these things then we need to simply install express and once this express is installed we can create a new file called server.js now inside this server.js first we need to say const express uh, or i can simply say import express from express and you will say that hey sardak this express this import is not going to work in express but make sure the newer version of express supports this import system so once you have this you can simply say const app is equal to express and then let's call this so we have this app and now what we need to do app dot get when we get on the home page 
then what we have to do we just need to say here like response which we can get from here res request and then response so response dot send and sending hello world okay now we need to test this thing so we need to start the server so let's simply say app dot listen and we need to provide the port so at the top i just say const port is equal to uh, let's say 4000 because 3000 is for the react okay so now i say the port which i have and once everything is done then i say console.log uh, server is running at http colon local host colon 4000 okay everything is done so what we have to do let's go on the package.json and create a new script this script is called npm run let's say dev and here we need to say node server dot js so we are going using node and then calling this server app, uh, file so inside this make sure we are on the server on inside our terminal say npm run dev and now it says some issue warning is typing import so remember i told you that this import is working with the new express but still it's having some issue there is a uh, one thing we need to do to use the import statement here we just need to set the type is equal to module in our package.json so here we just say type is equal to module like this once this is done let's try to run the server and you can see server is running so let's just click here and see that hello world is here so we have successfully created our backend and the uh, front end that means the r from the mern stack which is react and express and node so we are using node and the framework of node as express so we have used the n and the e it's only time for the m which is mongodb To get started with MongoDB, you need to visit the mongodb.com and then we are going to use the Atlas product from the MongoDB, which is just the cloud version of the database. That means we don't have to install the MongoDB in our system. So just click on the Atlas and after that you will land on this page. Click on try for free. We are going to use the free tier scroll down and sign up with google and uh, it's very simple just choose any account and you are done so once you select your account you are done with that you will be asked for some of the questions like uh, this kind of things so it says that hey i'm done with these things everything is fine i accept your policy and after that it will say welcome to the cloud database from mongodb and then we will have another page where it will ask you for the personalization so it simply asks for what kind of uh, what is your goal to use this mongodb atlas so i'm learning mongodb and what kind of application you are going to create so i'm going to work on a simple personalization and the language i'm using is obviously a javascript click on finish and after that it will going to ask you for which cloud provider you want to use and which tier you want to choose so i'm going to choose the free tier you can see this one so click on create and then finally it says on the free tier you will use the shared one shared uh, server and i'm going to select the aws and at last click on create cluster so you can obviously give the cluster name as you want so let's give this bitfumes mern stack mern bitfumes mern simple create cluster and now there's a capture thing so chimney is where the chimney chimney and chimney okay 
so verify and now it's creating the cluster so you can see here it says the cluster is in provisioning and while it's provisioning let's create the username and password so username is bitfumes password is bitfumes at the rate one two three click on create user this user will be useful when we will connect to our mongodb so you can see it says finally the cluster is finished and now it's second step is connect from from where you want to connect i want to connect from my local but it's asking me for the ip address instead of doing that from here what i can do i can go on the database section and then once we are here we can see we have this bitfumes mern cluster we can click on connect and then it's asking you for another option which is like you can allow from anywhere which is just giving this as the ip which is allowing from anywhere click on add ip once this is done then you need to choose from where we are going to connect we are going to connect from our application not from the terminal not from the mongodb compass which is a graphical user interface to use the uh, mongodb and obviously not from just the vs code so click on connect your application and then we will get this kind of code this is going to be useful when we will connect from our uh, express server so here we are and here we have our express like this but how do we connect to our mongodb server for that we need to install our mongoose so if i search for mongoose we can get something like this or you can go on the npmjs.com to see how this is going to work you can install this with npm install mongoose so let's install this and see how we can use it so mongoose is a mongodb object modeling tool basically it just help you to create the models interact with the models and do a lot of things so you just need to use the import statement and after that you can connect on your um, database you have given so it's simple so let's do that so i'm going to do import from the mongoose like this and finally we can say uh, mongoose dot connect and connecting where we have that on here so let's copy this thing and uh, paste it like this we know the password is bitfumes at the rate one two three and now everything is done but since this is going to return a promise you can see it's written as await so either you can use this as await thing or you can use the then so i can use the dot then part where i will just say that hey console.log console.log mongodb connection is successful but if there is some issue then i just say there is an error and i say console.error of error that's simple so we are connecting and if everything is fine then say this message otherwise just give me any error so let's see how it's going to work so npm run dev when i say dev you can also change it to serve if you want so let's use the serve or start whatever you want so i'm going to use the serve so this time it says some issue it says uri must include host name domain name and top level domain so what happened here is our password is including this at the rate and you can see we have another at the rate so this is actually creating the issue so what you can do you can go here on this and go to the uh, database access and here on this side you can just edit your password so i can say edit password and it will be a bitfumes one two three only so let's just click on show bitfumes one two three everything is done update the password and now let's go and remove the at the rate from here and then try so first we need to kill this and npm run serve so you will see that first we are getting the server is running and then we are getting the mongo connection is successful so congratulations mongodb is really successful connected
but instead of using then when we use the await it will going to wait for the mongodb connection because this is we want and after that we can do the console log like this so at this point first you will get the mongodb connection you can see this and then it will start our server everything is fine and now let's move to the next thing so how do we get started with our expense app so first i need to have a form where i can add the transaction amount transaction detail and the date of the transaction so let's do that for that i will go on the client side that means on the react if I go on the source directory, you can see a lot of files I have. But the interesting file is app.js. Here we have everything which you can see here inside this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just remove everything. And then I will remove this class name also. And here I will say hello world. And then you can see now I don't need uh, this logo fit because logo is not required. Then uh, in this uh, index.css i don't need all these things because maybe when we use any css uh, framework we will use that right now we are not uh, writing any tests and we don't have any app.css so everything is done we just remove this app.css from here and uh, let's see what we are getting and yes we are getting hello world now instead of this hello world what i can do i can create a simple form so we'll create a form and this form will include first one input field which is for our type of uh, it's going to be a number and we can call it placeholder as uh, uh, enter transaction amount Similar to this, I also need the description. So description is going to enter transaction details. And finally, we need the, this is not going to be the, <laughs> this is going to be the text one. And finally, this is going to be the date type and uh, like this. And at the last, we need a button, which is just going to submit. So submit and here it's going to be the type of submit okay so this form is done you can see the form is ready let me zoom this for you which is looking very ugly yeah i know but it's fine okay so how do we do that so first what we have to do we need to say on submit of this form i need to create a handle submit so handling the submit inside this form and then we have to create a function which is going to just say console.log of working that means our form is working so let's click uh, let's first open the console here and then click on submit and you saw that it was a glimpse of that that working and then it's reload so what we have to do we need to say that hey just e dot prevent default that means just prevent the default uh, submission of this form so for that let's uh, click on submit and yeah it's just working and it is stopped okay so that's good but we need to get the amount so let's say we get some amount we get some detail and uh, we have the date then we need to submit this but how do we get all these things for that we need to create a form so we say use state and we create a form and initial value for the form is amount is going to be uh, let's say null or maybe we can call it zero then detail or maybe description is empty and date is also going to be empty maybe i can use the null nice so let's import this one and uh, this use state i have to import it uh, so i will say import uh, use state from 
react okay so that's done now what we have to do whenever we write something inside any of the input we should fill the respective uh, form field so here on this input field i say on change i will say handle input create a function called handle input and here also we get the e that means the event and then i will say uh, console.log of e dot tar target that means event dot target so whenever we write on the number that means the amount it should give me some value here so let's write yeah you can see we are getting the target but then also we can say give me the target dot value so that's also going to work so just reload it and type you can see whatever i'm typing i am getting here that's cool so what next next is we need to set the value as the default one so i say value is equal to form dot amount and now whatever this amount is it's going to stick here so now this time if we try to change you can see although we are getting but we are not changing on the input field because then whenever we handle the input we need to set the form so we say set the form it's an object so spread the form details whatever we have but only update the amount field and that is going to be the value which user is typing so reload and uh, you can see everything is fine we have removed the console log so that's why it is here but if you are having this uh, react dev tool then you can just click on here on the component and you can see state amount is whatever we type like this Good. that's good now finally we just need to give the name as amount here similar to this i will give the name as description and name as date why i am giving the name because now i will paste these two things so that i can get the change for every input field and instead of hard coding this amount i will say e dot target dot name so whatever the name of that field is and we need to put that inside the square bracket so that it will evaluate the value of e dot target dot name that means the input name so amount description and date in this way we can see okay so i think something is wrong yeah so it should be description description and this should be date wow so this is good just type something type something choose a date and you can see here all these things are filled and now what we have to do whenever we just uh, submit this form we submit uh, we can just say that the console log of the form we have okay it says the value prop on input should be null should not be null actually so we are making this date as the null so we can make it empty string reload yeah that's good so yeah here we are here we are choose the date submit and yet you can see form is here so what next we need to just send this form to localhost to 4000 which is our server where we have our uh, apis now how do we do that we can say fetch and fetch with the http colon localhost colon 4000 slash we will call it as the uh, how we can call it transaction hmm? so transaction we are going to create the new transaction but since this is going to be a post request so we need to give like method is a post and after that we need to send the body body is form now we don't have this kind of uh, transaction api in our in our server we will going to create that but for now this is how it's going to work so we say const response is equal to await 
And since this is await, we need to make this function as a sync. And finally, we say uh, console dot log of response. Okay, let's see what's going to happen. Yeah, we know there is nothing called the transaction API, but let's see now what's going to happen. So click on submit. We get obviously 404, but before that we get this uh, course error. So course error is uh, error which is actually going to prevent any other website to get or to post something to actually use any API from any unknown URL. So for localhost 4000, that means for our server, localhost 3000, that means the React is an unknown for unknown URL. So it is not allowing it. So how do we solve it? Let's see. To solve the course error, we first need to search here and we say express course. And this is going to be a middleware. So we need to have this course middleware. So we just need to say npm install course. Once this is done, we can import it. And then we just need to say app.use course. That's it. Yes, so easy. So install this on our server. Make sure this is on the server. So CD on the server. And on the server side, I'm installing the course. Once this is done, let's then open the server.js file. Here, import course from course. And then once we have the app, we say app.use of the course. Now, this is done. So is this going to work? Let's see. So we will go here on our front end. That means on the React side, we type something. And then click on submit and still we are getting this course why we are getting this because we have not restarted our server so first we need to kill the server by pressing ctrl c then once again run the server and it's successfully running reload the page click on submit and what happened it's still pending and you can see it's pending <laughs> so we are not getting any course error this is really good thing but we need to take care of these this transaction uh, api which we have not yet created but before that what we have seen is we need to restart our server every time we want any changes on our server so instead of doing this i need to install um, node mon so node mon is uh, a package which is going to be useful uh, to restart the server whenever we do any changes for that on the server side let's go on the package.json and instead of saying node server.js i will say node mon server.js and once we do that restart our server and this time it's now you can see it says mode node mon server.js so let's try to change something or basically i just want to save this file and as soon as i save this file it has restarted our server that's true finally it says that empty response from the transaction hmm. this is we have to create but before that what i really want to do is you can see on our react side thus that means the front end side we have the git ignore file on the server end we don't have and i want to push all these things in a single repository so that you don't have to go on two different repository to access it so i will move this git uh, ignore on the root of this file i just want to add something here so you can see the node module folder is inside the client and also on the server so just like we have done here dependency we just need to say client slash node module and then we need to say server slash node modules okay so once you are done with this then you will see that you will not get a lot of files on our git file now 
since we have removed the git ignore file from the client we need to also remove the dot git file so that there will be no uh, there will be no git repository inside the react so now react doesn't have any git repository so we need to create the git repository on the root of our file where we have both of the client and the server so right now we can just say uh, git init and uh, yeah you can see git is initialized and then since we have the git ignore file so you can see this node module file folder on both side is not doing anything so we also need to say that uh, this public directory uh, is required hmm. then is there anything else which we want to ignore for now there is nothing but uh, everything is fine so let's say git add all git commit with a message of mern stack now every time any lecture is completed i will do the git commit for that and that's done let's go on our github slash bitfumes and here i'm going to create a new repository and i will call it mern stack 2022 okay and then it's a public one create repository once this is done then click on these three commands and then we need to run these three commands from the root of our app, uh, project where we have both server and the client everything is done and everything is pushed reload on the github and you can see we have the client we have the server and we have the git ignore file that's really nice and uh, now let's work on the transaction api because our client is sending the data to the localhost 4000 slash transaction as the post request to start creating the api let's go to the server click on server.js and here we have the get request similar to the get request let's create a post request inside the post request i'm going to say slash transaction and this is going to return hello world for now and let's see what's we what we are getting so once again reload this page this is the react one localhost 3000 now click on submit and uh, this is taking time so let's just go on the course because this is really with the course so we are using app.course uh, what about here oh i forgot to call this course so once you are done with that you can reload and try to submit again so click on submit and you can see we are getting the response that's really nice so now instead of sending the just to the string i'm going to send a json because apis is going to send the JSONs, and here i say message is hello world so let's click on submit once again and go to the network tab and this time you will see that we are returning message as a hello world but on the payload you can see we have to send a form but we are not getting the form here it's an object object so let's go to the react side on the app.js and instead of sending a form i say json dot stringify of the form and now once again if i submit you will see that yes we are actually sending the form we have and we are getting the message so how do we get the message from here so what we can do actually we can get from get the data from here and we should get the data like here so submit mm, we are getting uh, undefined so we get the response we need to do the response dot json so data is equal to a weight of response dot json like this and let's log the data so reload submit and you can see we are getting this message as the hello world so this is how we are getting the data but what next 
instead of sending this uh, form we actually need to store the data we are sending or the form we are sending from the front end now how do we do that first we need to see how we can get the form for that let's just try to see what we have when we say request dot body when i do this and open my console go to the server the react actually click on submit yes we are getting that but now we are getting undefined because whatever we are sending from our react we are not able to get that on our server so for that we need to search for express body parser this is going to be an another middleware and just like we use the course middleware we need to install this one like here so open and make sure you are on the server and now install this body parser and how this is going to work it's very easy let's scroll down and here you need to import it and then use like this body parser dot json because we are dealing with the json right now so first import body parser from body parser and then after course we can add it and now since we have added the body parser server is restarted let's try this once again click on submit and you can see we are getting empty but why because we said that this is going to be only accepting the json and from our front end we are not sending any json so if we see the request we are giving so request is having accept of everything content type is plain text we don't want to send the plain text so we say headers is going to be the content type as application slash json just by doing this if we try once again to send it you can see we are getting amount description and date that's good so now we have the data from our front end so we can simply uh, destructure all these things so const amount data uh, description actually description and date from our request body that's good now we have everything let's try to store this on our mongodb now we need to store these data on our mongodb and for that we ha already have the mongos with this we have connected to the mongodb but to store the data in our mongodb we first need to create a model or a schema so let's click on read the documentation and here it says that you have to create a schema for your model a transaction model so how this is going to work first on the server end we are going to create a new directory called models inside that i'm going to call the model transaction.js this is going to be the transaction model you can also suffix it with transaction model but it's okay for now so first you need to import these two things and once you are done with that you say transaction schema is equal to new schema so new schema and here you provide the details of the fields you want to have so first is obviously the amount amount is going to be a number like this then we have a description is going to be a string and we have the date date is going to be the date field now we want to have a created at field also so suppose i'm going to add a transaction for yesterday but i'm adding that today so we have to have the created at field also which is also going to be a date field but i want to have the created at field to be defaulted to the new date so something like that the type is date and default is date dot now something like that so i think for both of these i will say type is date and default is new date and 
uh, yeah so date is this and date dot now for the created at like this okay this is done and we have easily created it but what next we need to now actually send this outside so we need to say export default and exporting default what we need to say new mongoose uh, how do we do that we can check here if you scroll down mongoose dot model we need to say mongoose dot model and give the name of the model so i say transaction and then provide the schema so transaction schema is here something like that you can provide with the capital t since it's going to be the uh, model okay so this is how you create the model let's test this by creating the new data how do we create that so for that you just need to say new and whatever model you have created and then once you provide the data inside the uh, parenthesis then say save it's going to be a promise so await and finally done with this so let's open the server.js and here we have all these things name description date so say const new uh, const i can say transaction is equal to new transaction and this is going to be in the transaction model like this but uh, it has to be with a capital t and uh, maybe we can also call this with a capital t the transaction file so that's done and now i call this with a small transaction because this is the one which we are creating so new transaction with amount description and date basically it has to be like amount is the amount description is description and something like that but but since the key and the value is same so that's why key and the a variable is same so that's why we don't have to repeat ourselves once this is done then we say transaction dot save and this is going to be an await process for that we need to say this is going to be the async once everything is done so in inside this message i say success you can return success or you can return the transaction itself but for now it's going to be the success let's try this so first i say it's going to be the 20 rupees uh, i'm from india so it's rupees if you are from any other country just use your uh, currency i say i got ice cream so ice oops not here ice cream when i got it i got it today so click on submit and it failed now why it failed so let's see so connection refused so i think it's taking time to connect and something wrong happened let's restart the server and see okay so still we are having some issue it says uh, can't find module of transaction okay so what happened is it says uh, i can't find the transaction.js file so something is wrong let's see yeah it's done i need to just say .js so since we have it let's try this once again click on submit and success that's good but how do we really verify that the data is stored in the mongodb so we need to connect to our mongodb from maybe from the shell or maybe from the mongodb compass but instead of moving into the database it's not recommended because since we have the data so why don't we fetch the data from the database and we don't have to visit the database directly so next task is to show all the transaction we have just below this so how this is going to look so let's go on the front end on the react once we are done with the form then we give a br tag like this and then uh, we use a div or maybe a section like here and inside that we will going to see uh, we will going to have a table maybe <laughs> like that and uh, then inside that we have a table header so we call it table header table header is amount then description then date 
something like this and these things will move on table head like this and then comes table body and here we provide a table row inside that we have the table data amount is uh, one description is something something date is obviously something something so this is going to be something like this but uh, we will make it beautiful by using the css and css frameworks later but let's first fetch all the data from the mongodb once we load this page we need to send a request to our server which is going to fetch the data from the mongodb so that means we first need to go on the client side and server the source actually app.js and inside this we are going to use the use effect so we say use effect and here we are going to first import this use effect from react and then i say fetch transactions this is a function i'm going to create and let's create anywhere you want like this function fetch transactions and this is going to be response is equal to fetch and this is like http colon localhost 4000 slash transaction now you will see that these two urls are exactly same one this one is to fetch the transaction this one is to create the transaction but the difference is in the method here the method is post but here we are not providing any method so it will be defaulted to get so once we get that this has to be await and async after that we simply say const data is equal to await response dot json like this okay and finally let's just log the data if we check this right now yes we are getting something for say th cannot appear to be child of t head so let's see here everything seems okay but we will talk about that later first let's clear this and uh, uh, once again reload and you can see it says uh, not found so transaction is uh, not found yes we know that there is no api called slash transaction with a get request so if i go once again on the server.js we have the transaction for the post request we need to create another so let's say app dot get on slash transaction and then we call it async uh, request response now here we just need to first get the transaction so const transaction is equal to transaction model dot find and i want to find all so i'm not providing anything so this means if i say empty that means it's going to find every other thing and finally we say response dot json is going to be the transaction or if you want you can call like this but make sure this is going to be await and something like this so let's see how this is going to work reload and still it says not found that's not good and i think yeah i have misspelled this so transaction has to be um transaction like this so let's copy from here and paste it here yes this is done so let's go reload this page once again and we are getting the data like here so finally we can also say destructure the data so that i can get the transaction yeah you can see we have the transaction which we have created like ice cream amount is 20 created at field we have date field we have everything is right everything is very very nice what next let's create another state to hold all the transactions we have so use state and this will going to transactions it's going to be plural and it's going to be an array 
so once we have the transaction we say set transaction and put all the data that means the transaction we have okay so reload and uh, yeah we have that ignore this warning that's good and now we need to loop through all the data on our body the tr so here i say transactions dot map and inside that we get normal transaction trx i call it and then i will return this tr field like here okay so now i say this is the amount so i will use the trx dot amount then trx dot description and trx dot date yes so this is good and you can see everything is really really nice finally whenever we do any map on the react we have to say key is like transaction dot underscore id we have reload everything is good everything is fine so let's add another one so 100 rupees for my for my coffee and this is again i did i bought it tomorrow no, today actually <laughs> click on submit yes this is a success reload and that's added here okay what we need to do next whenever we add any transaction we should have it real time update this means whenever we do this handle submit after everything is done we just need to say fetch transactions which is going to fetch the transaction once again so we don't have to do anything we just say if response dot okay so i say like if response dot okay then fetch the transactions once again so this time i will do 150 for a movie and uh, let's get it once again today submit and yes you can see movie is added but what next i want i want to have the latest detail first and not at the last for that let's go here on the server on the server.js and here we say after getting it i say sort but sort by created at field so let's go reload this oh i need to say sorting has to be uh, minus one which is uh, the reverse and yeah you can see the latest transaction is at the first wow so we have done that but you can see now we are filling up server.js with a lot of things and uh, we have to create some dedicated file which is going to handle only the transactions next as we know we need to clear this server.js file with the transaction api we have created or we can say the transaction routes we have created so express provide the routes here in this server directory i'm going to create a new directory called routes inside that i'm going to say and create a new file called transactions dot js and in this first i'm going to import from express and i'm going to import the router once you have this router then what you have to do you have to create the new instance of the router so const router is equal to router and let's call it then whatever we have defined here we can move to our router transaction router actually like from here to here now what we have to do instead of doing this with the app.get or app.post let's use the router.get and router.post we also need to import the transaction we have so that's going to import it from import transaction from we need to go up a directory inside the model we have transaction.js so this is done and after that you can see everything is fine at last we can say export default uh, 
the router so this file is taking care of the routes related to the transaction only now here what we have to do we need to import this route so import uh, transaction i can say transaction routes from we have the routes slash transaction.js now just like we are using this course middleware body parser we have to say app dot use and what is the base url so it's going to be the this thing the slash and after that we provide the transaction url so what we have to do this has to be here and now let's check this if it is working fine or not so since we are using nodebond everything is restarted the server is restarted and if we reload yes you can see we are getting everything as it is but since we are we know that these routes are related to the transaction why don't we just remove the transaction keyword from here and here and move these this transaction keyword inside this expert.js where we are connecting the routes here so slash transaction will go to the transaction routes okay and after doing that it is still working as it is that's so simple but one thing more we can do we can see we here we are doing a lot of things and these are actually the apis so instead of calling it as a routes you can also call it api you want uh, maybe i can call it like this but it's all totally up to you what you want to call at the end it's going to work as it is if you want to distinguish between the transaction model we have and transaction route we have you can call it transaction api this is also going to work with a capital t so that we have a proper consistency in our code so it it's going to be transaction api uh, it's going to here transaction api.js okay so instead of transaction routes you can also call transactions uh, transactions api with the s okay that's good and it should work it's working absolutely fine let's try to add one more thing and this time i will say 200 for apple and i will take once again the same date and yeah it's added and we are good to go but once we add we need to just clear these things also so uh, let's go on the react that means the client side on the source app.js once we are done with this if everything is okay we are fetching the transaction that's good but set form to initial form so we have the initial form which is like this so why don't we do one thing we simply say const initial form is equal to this thing and now we can put that initial form here like this and here initial form like this okay so these two things are done and it will be cleared uh, these fields will be cleared once we submit the new transaction on our application okay so that's good we have cleared our server file but now what we need to do we need to clear this um, you can say database connection also we can move this database connection to some other place so for that go to the client side create database uh, directory inside that we can say uh, mongodb we can call mongodb.js and what we are doing here we can just cut and paste it like this then we just need to import mongoose from mongoose okay and then we can just say hey uh, import database from database database slash mongodb okay like this and uh, 
we can say the database and this has to be a function actually so let's create a function so function and we can we can name it connect and everything is like this this is going to be the async function and just say export default connect okay so we are saying connect instead of database we can call it connect and here we say connect the database okay so this is done and uh, we have some issue here it says can't find module of mongodb once again it has to be mongodb.js okay so yes it is working and you can see it is connecting with the database and doing the server thing so maybe we can say await for the connect and mongodb connection is first then server okay everything is fine let's move to the next topic because we have to clear our app.js the react part also to give some styling to our application i will open this material ui for react the website is mui.com that's super easy so let's go and click on get started here we have installation and it's very easy we just need to install these three things and running this command so click on copy go it's very important to go inside of the client first so cd into the client and then run it so while this is running let's see what else we have to do after that we need to have this roboto font and the icon so let's copy this and we have to put that somewhere but where we can put it's going to be inside of this index.html so let's paste it like here and of font also that's done once this is done then we are ready to use our uh, material ui so let's go on the usage so it's very simple you just need to import the button from material and then use it like this so let's copy this from here and go to our app dot js import this one and use it something like this but for just for now i'm going to paste it anywhere so that we can just see how it's going to look okay so let's go and yeah you can see it's working the original size is this i just zoomed it for you but you can see everything is working absolutely fine so we don't want this hello world button here so first we will get started with some navbar so let's close this getting it started from here go to the components and scroll down you will see that we have this surfaces and app bar we have now we can choose any one you want there are a lot of available toolbars here so it doesn't matter which one you choose we can configure it anyway so here we have and uh, we can copy this from here and then go on our application inside this i'm going to create a new uh, you can say directory and i will call it components inside this i'm going to create app bar dot js and then create this or actually I, I have copied everything so just paste it like this okay so we have to use this app bar in our app dot js so instead of this button let's say app bar and uh, this should be like this and we need to import app bar from go to components and app bar okay so this is done and okay so this is done and let's go on our application and now it says cannot resolve icons hmm so when we have started with this on the getting started installation part we can see we have to install this icons if we want to use it so once again we are on the client side and paste it so that we will 
also have the icons the material icon okay so once this is done and it is done finished so once again we can check and yes you can see we have the app bar right here this is looking okay but we can customize it later as we will move forward but first it's not going to be a news it's called expenser which the name i'm giving to our application so instead of news i can say expenser because it's going to track your expenses okay now next i want to have this form in a card below which is going to be just below of this app bar so just below the app bar we have the card so let's copy this card thing and to have the card we need to use card and then we have the card content then typography if we want to write anything and then card action okay so we need all these things let's copy this and this has to be below of this app bar so let's paste this and we need to import a lot of things so instead of doing this here i will create a new component and i call it transaction form dot js okay so let's have everything we have so instead of this i can copy everything from here so that we don't have to do anything and we call this as transaction form okay for now we just have to import this later on we will change it with the form only but to check we just say transaction form and wow it is imported okay so that's done let's see how this is going to look and card seems like this but card has to be uh, not with this action so we don't need the action part on the card so no learn more thing okay so this looks good and let's remove these things and uh, have the margin at the top so if i go here you can see on the transaction form we have created we can provide any css we want so css will be like margin top is 10 pixel so just write 10 and it's done so it is uh, having uh, like a margin at the top and then we don't want uh, this uh, typography of uh, these three things so let's uh, remove all these things and now since we are not using any uh, bull which we have created so let's remove that also everything is looking good we have a nice little card we can provide also a background to our body of the html so here we have index.html and we can simply say body is going to be the background color but which color we can use let's say gray for now but we need to import this on our index.js so we just say import index.css and that's it so yeah but this is too gray so in our material ui if you scroll down on the customization you will find that we have the color palette so we can choose color from different range of colors but here i'm going to use the 100 for the gray 100 this one is good so let's copy that and go to our index.css and paste it and you can see it is very nice little smooth gray which is going to give me a nice card and it's looking good so what next we need to have this card working with all the uh, like uh, form fields from the material ui only so let's move this form into this card right here we have the uh, transaction form right here inside this card we have a card content but then we need to create a form so simple form is good and inside that let's put this typography like this okay that's good and it doesn't have any reflection here because now we need to go on the material ui and then we need to search for the text field so let's say where is the text field text 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 yeah here we have the text field 
and I like this uh, outline text field. So let's have that and for that we need to import the text field from material UI. So like this and how do we use it? We have to use something like this. Okay. So after that I can put it like this. How this is going to reflect. Yeah, that's right. Now we need three of them. So first is the uh, number then is the uh, simple description. So we have to put two. Two is here and third one has to be the date picker. So that's good. So let's search for date. Yeah, date and time picker. And this date picker is really nice. So let's use it. But how do we use it? So first we need to say desktop date picker, but it has to be inside the localize provider, localization provider. So first we need to have this localization provider, but this localization provider is coming from X date picker. Hmm. So this means we need to install this X date picker like this from the NPM. Okay, so that's good. And let's open install this X date picker and also we want let's say day dot dejs instead of uh, moment both are same so let's install these two things and now we are good to go so first we need the localization provider so we are having it let's uh, close this localization provider now it need the adapter js uh, adapter djs which should come once again from the x date picker so localization and x date picker we need to import so like this it's done what next after that we need to have desktop date picker like this so we need to import that so here we are desktop date picker okay like like this then value and the change uh, handle change so let's copy this handle change function we have to create just for now because we will create everything later on to submit the form and do everything everything is good let's see how it's looking reload this page and everything is fine and you can see our date picker is working fine at last we need a form to submit that means a button to submit actually so how about button so once again we need to go on uh, let's let's go back and here we are go on the buttons where is the button yeah here we have and it has to be this kind of thing which we already know how to use so this is the button like this and finally we can use like, like this after localization we have the button and we call this submit and the type of the button is also submit okay so variation is text i think variation has to be uh, contained instead of text and looks good and finally we need to have all these things spread full of this card and we don't want these typography related things or like this so maybe we can just say here that hey i want to create a new transaction add new transaction okay this is good and uh, this has to be out of the form and uh, Variation has to be title. Is there any title? No. So we can go on the customization. We have the typography. And on the typography, we will find we have the font sizes. Uh, not font size. We need something else. Yeah. So here we have. So we can see we can use the H6 also. Variation for H6 now add new transaction all these things are here and we need to spread as i told you so the simple thing is we just need to give some of the uh, you can say padding i can call it 
and uh, this will be having a style or just the margin left is going to be let's say five pixel and how about this hmm so it is it has to be margin right instead of left right margin right looks good and also on our date picker and the date picker is having this text field so we can provide it like this and see yes it is working and we can reduce the size of each of the text field by saying size is equal to small and copy that paste here paste here and yep it's looking really really nice so this is done and finally we need to change the you can say label so label is like uh, amount okay then description and this is not date desktop i can say transaction date transaction date okay so everything is looking absolutely amazing what next we need to make this form working so to make this form work everything we already have inside this form which we were using so that form is actually inside source app.js and here we have this input form we have and submit so let's copy all the all of these things so first we have the initial form let's open here and paste it then create the state inside of this and import this from react and we can directly import like uh, we can say from use state from react it is imported then what next then we need the transaction which is not here but we need the handle input so we already have created handle change which is exactly same as a handle input or handle change which will get the event and doing all these things so let's remove which we don't need finally we have the handle submit which is a little bigger so let's copy all these from here and paste it like this now it need that fetch transaction we will do that later and uh, this has to be on the form so on submit we are doing the handle submit okay everything looks good and uh, let's try with the value value is going to be form dot amount then on change will going to be the handle change so copy these two on the description it has it has to be same so description and here also actually it is given inside of this and value is like here okay this is done and finally let's try this thing okay we have everything here and uh, we can remove this form which we have on our app.js because it is using a lot of things which we don't need now that's nice and uh, this time what i want but you can see it's not working when i change it's not changing why is that because we don't have the name for any field so let's provide the name is amount and here we have the name as description and here uh, do we need the name here date and done so can we change yeah we can write we can write oh what happened <laughs> so this is not the amount this is the date okay so now transaction date and uh, it has to be the current date so what i'm going to do i'm going to say this is new date like this and yeah that's good change the date but it's not changing this means this date picker works differently so we don't need this name let's go here and open the date picker and see how this is working so in this case we don't have the event 
and we don't have the name it's directly getting the new value or updated value so what we have to do instead of this we can say handle date and this is going to be a new function and it says handle date new value comes like this and then we say set form and spread the form but the date value is going to be the new value okay like this so that's done and let's once again try change to nine yeah it's done okay so finally let's add another transaction of 250 rupees with the what we can buy with the 250 rupees again another movie so movie two and this has to be on yesterday so let's click on submit hmm, it's working no error on the console we are not getting error and uh, it's not reflected because we haven't uh, done the fetching of retransactions so if i reload you can see the new movie is added in the list so now let's just do do the refetching of the transaction so if i enable it it says that you don't have this function so we don't we have to accept this function as a prop when we use this transaction form so here we need to provide this like here everything is good finally let's try with uh, a random thing click on submit it has done its job the final thing we have to do is we need to list this in a material design and then after we will do the uh, update and the delete for these uh, expenses time to work on this transaction list for that we are going to use the data table from the material ui how this is going to work you can see this is the basic table which we can use and uh, let's just open this and we have a lot of things here let's copy each and everything and then understand it so first what i want i want to have the data table or transaction list instead of this table before that let's create another component called transaction list dot js and then paste everything which we have copied from the documentation now let's understand so we have some create data which is actually getting all these things and returning it as it is but it's returning in an object okay then we have the rows and in the rows you can see we are using this create data to actually sort or give you the date or give the data in an object after that we have some basic table container then table table head table row table cell and all other things if everything is fine let's just rename it to transaction transaction transactions list actually so let's rename this file also okay and now what i'm going to do i'm going to the app.js and here just below this i will say transactions transact tran, <laughs> transactions list which is like this and now let's see how this is looking wow this looks really really nice but you can see we are having no margin so margin at the top we have to give so here we say x s and margin top is 10 pixel okay let's try yeah it's look it's looking good next we need to have all the data we are having into this data so first let's move the fetching of the data into this component so on the app.js we are fetching the transactions like this so we can cut both of these things actually we have to cut all of these things the user state use effect and this function then move this uh, i think we have to keep it here because we need the transaction to fetch from here hmm. so how about having all these things here but 
we can send all the transaction as the prop so we can say transactions is equal to transactions and we will going to accept it as a prop here and since we have all the transactions now we can loop over the transaction instead of rows so we don't need this rows and we will take care about this later but for now it should give me this number of rows like this now you can see we have row so row dot title will be here then row dot description and then finally date so let's remove all extra cells we have so like this and now name this as i think this is amount not the title and then uh, description and finally date so it should be amount not the title let's see yes it is looking very very nice and this is how we can use the data table now since we have the, the data table here we can remove all these uh, uh, html table we have created so let's just remove this and you can see app.js looks so clean three uh, components all dedicated to some individual task and we have nice list so instead of this we can have a uh, like title the, like this here so that we can have a uh, uh, description or we can say list of transaction something like that so we can have it here above this and for that we can have the empty bracket so that react will not complain and then we say i think typography typography or we can get it and we need to import this so maybe trans from the transaction form we have the typography we can copy okay and now we don't need this create data and inside the typography i can simply say hey i need the list of transactions so lists of transactions so list of transactions let's see oh it's uh, like that so maybe i need to give this here on the typography yes and it also has to be font of a different size so once again on the form i can check what typography we have variant is h6 we can call the variant is h6 nice this is good but i think we have to move all these things into a container so that it will have a reduced size so maybe we can give container so do we have the container here so let's say container yes we have it and it's simple container so maybe we can call this as a container yes and finally we have to import the container from material and that's done yeah so this looks a little bit good and we have done that maybe we can also move this all transaction into container that will be really nice so we can call container here instead of on the transaction list how this it's good so i can remove the container from here so i do just like this cool looking very very nice and we have achieved now what next we need another column here which will say that hey i need some actions so what kind of action i need so first here you can see i will provide action and action is going to be here as the table cell and this need two buttons one is a simple edit and then delete okay so like this edit and delete so that has to be there and uh, we need to work on these two things also this is on the left side maybe i can align it to right or maybe on the center 
it will be like this okay so right is there amount is also right maybe if i give center center how about center yeah center is good so center yes so center with the amount description date date has to be once again on the center and here also okay and finally action also has to be centered nice so why the description has to be on the right everything looks really really nice and let's work on that delete part to work on the delete part let's just convert delete and edit to the icon so here let's search for the icons and we have this material icon and now search for edit first so we can use the edit one which is uh, for me is uh, this one edit location no this one pencil yeah so this one is good and edit icon very simple but we can do some variations if we want we can have something like this rounded outlined sharp so let's use the sharp one so edit sharp so copy this from here open the transaction list and paste it now copy this and at the last where we have the actions we can provide hey this is edit sharp icon let's see how this is looking yeah looks good and also for the delete so delete is also there and delete sharp is like this so once again like here delete sharp so delete sharp will be like this and yep we just need the margin on the left for the delete sharp so x s margin left is equal to let's say two yeah this is nice but it has to be clickable so can we do that on the button so let's search for the buttons and here we will see that somewhere we can have the button so here is the icon but with the button so you can see we have the icon button and we can use that this one is good so let's have one icon button like this and this is not a photo camera not input field and i can button we need to import as usual copy paste and Arial, I don't need label is component, color is primary. How about this? And you can see now it is becoming clickable. And uh, we have to remove the margin. And now it will be circular. Yeah, like this. Cool. And this has to be a uh, warning. Do we have the warning color? Yeah, we have the warning color. Great. So we also have the danger then do we have the danger no we don't have the danger anyways so similar to this we also need to do for the sharp okay and this time it is primary okay looks very very nice so when i click here it should remove the transaction but before that we need the click event that means on the click event so on the button we say on click we say remove simple nothing else but it has to pass the id for which transaction we have to remove so we need to provide a anonymous function and then we say row dot underscore id so let's create this remove function here so remove function and give me the id so here i just console log the id and see how this is working open the console 
and it says that you need to provide the key i forgot to provide the key key will be underscore id and now if i reload yeah no errors so if i click on delete you can see we have the id yeah so this is really nice so let's just give a confirmation here and then we say if uh, confirm and are you sure like this if it's not confirmed that means user said hmm, i don't want to delete then just return do nothing and uh, this is say use of expect unexpected use of confirm hey this is expected actually confirm window dot confirm okay yeah this is good window dot confirm is there so if i cancel window dot confirm that's not going to do anything but if i say okay that means if i say okay then it's going to log but we don't want to log we want to give a delete request to http colon local host 4000 slash and once again it's going to be transaction but transaction with the transaction id so underscore id will come here like this and it has to be template literal so that we can have the id but this is going to be a delete method so method is going to be delete okay we don't have to do anything else we just need to say const response is equal to await of this and async function and uh, i say if response dot okay then we can just say something do some alert and kind of that so for now we just say window dot alert deleted successfully okay let's try this and see what's going to happen if i click click on cancel nothing happening but if i click and click on okay yeah not found because we have not created the api so let's go on our server and see how we can create the new api for our delete of the transaction so it's very simple we have to say route dot router dot delete deleting on slash why slash because we are on the transactions api and we are using this transaction api inside our server.js where we have already defined that whenever i am inside this transaction api that means i'm working with slash transaction and this is why we are just using slash and then we just need to say async request response arrow function and then we need to first find and then delete so it's very simple we just need to say await and then we need to say uh, transaction which is the transaction model i'm talking about then dot find one and delete this is the one and then we need to say request or actually we can first get the id const underscore id uh, how do we get the id that's the problem so there's no problem let's just log and say request and then we will see how it's working so we are here on the server and this is localhost 3000 we need to go on localhost 4000 and then we, if we try to send this uh, still it says uh, um, not found why not found because the delete api will be like colon underscore id or simply we can say id so this is how we can get the id so here we should get the id and we don't have to say like let's let's see how it's working so if i say delete yeah something else happening and uh, here we can see it says console log id is not defined hmm it should give me the id but it's not giving so once again get back to the request and then try to send once again and this time you will see that 
uh, somewhere we should get the params or query maybe I can just search for ID so where is the ID let's search for request dot params and see like this yeah we get the ID so request dot param dot ID is the real ID we need so let's just remove all these things and say request dot param dot ID is this one and uh, once it, it is done request a response dot JSON with a message of success it is deleted and uh, that's great now what next we need to just try this so let's try to delete this one which is the one we have created so let's say okay and delete it successfully and that's good but once we delete we need to refetch the data so that the table will be updated but once again you can see this is actually not deleted so something wrong happened so there is some problem with this so the problem is we are just giving the id but actually we need to say there that underscore id is going to be the object id object id uh, this is uh, maybe we can try with just the id let's see if this is working or not so remove it says deleted but yes it is really deleted so what i can do i can just refetch the data so we have on the client side go to component transaction list and here we also need to need the fetch transactions so we have to pass it from our app.js just like we are passing here on the transaction form we need to pass it here on the transaction list also and then we will be able to refetch once we are successfully done okay so let's add another one and click on submit it's added and updated click on delete click on ok and it says done and the table is also updated this is really good but you know with the mongodb you can do various things you can also do the delete one so this is also going to work so once again i just add another one so that i don't have to delete any other thing so click click on delete okay and this is also deleted so there are various ways to delete and we have done the delete part successfully before moving into the edit part let's just format this date and then we will do the edit so first we need to go on the front end that means on the client side the react and the component transaction list we have and here we are just giving the date as it is so we need to just create a function which is going to format the date so i create a function and i say format date here we accept the date and then remember we already have the day.js so we can use the day.js to format it so i can simply say import day.js from day.js okay and it's very easy this dot format and provide the date uh, i think this is different so we can just say day.js and we have the format and how we are going to format it so we need to give the date first and then provide the format uh, format 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 so first it's date and then what is the format of the date so dd dd y y y y so let's use it here so this will be like this okay so yes 16 9 2022 so maybe i can just say with a hyphen and then comma and it's going to be small m double small m okay what i want i want the exact 
uh, name so triple m triple m triple capital m yes so 16 september 2022 this is what i want and even if i can remove it yes so this is looking a little bit better and uh, what next next is uh, we need to click on the edit and then whatever we have here wherever we are clicking we need to move all the data into this form so that we can update that form this is going to be the real interesting thing and it's the front end plus the back end part so how this is going to work so first when i click we need to move the data to the app.js so here we have the app.js and we don't have any way to accept from this component which one we are editing so i'm going to create another use state and i call this as edit transaction and set edit transaction and this one is going to be an object not a not an array okay so i'm going to pass the set edit transaction to the transaction list and what we will do with this let's see so first accept this prop and then when we click on any edit button then at that time we need to pass it so on click of edit we can say that hey this is going to be an anonymous function which is going to pass the row row means the actual transaction so we are passing this and setting the transaction on the state which we have on app.js and then we will pass this edit transaction to the transaction form like this and on this transaction form we will accept it first and then the initial form we have so we will say that if there is something inside the tran edit transaction use that as the initial form not the real initial form we are having so how this we can do first we can create a use effect use effect and like this and i'm going to log edit transaction and let's see what's going to happen so first we will open the console and you can see we are not having anything in the edit transaction but if i click on edit hmm, still nothing is happening but what if i say that hey i want to run this use effect whenever there is a change in edit transaction prop only going to run this edit use effect when there is a change or update in edit transaction so let's see click and yeah whenever we click on edit we have the edited data to the different component so we move from transaction list to app app.js or app.js whatever it is and then from app we have passed that to transaction form this is how we move the data from one component to another component via the parent component okay so what we have to do we just need to say set form with edit transaction but only when if edit transaction is not um, equal to empty object so remember initially it has to be like this initially edit transaction is an empty object so when i say that hey set the form as the edit transaction only when if it is not equal to the empty object this means what's going to happen now if i click on edit uh, the first one you can see now all these things are here if i click on apple you can see it is now here so instead of submit we just need to convert this button to update because this is not submitting this is updating okay so once again let's get at the bottom and here we create like if uh, there is a if like this if edit transaction is not equal to uh, like this uh, empty object then show uh, a new button called update otherwise 
if edit transaction is equal to empty object then show simple button which is a submit button now variant variant can be uh, secondary like this okay okay that's good and uh, what next now we have submit button for the we have submit of the form so whenever we submit the form we always do the post request but once again we need to do two things if we are editing we don't want the post we don't want the patch request and if we are submitting then only we want the post request so how this is going to work so it will be like if edit transaction is equal to the empty object then i say submit okay or maybe i can say create like this else i can say update this is very simple thing so we need to create two function create and update so let's say function create and create is exactly like this this one and like here and at last we return the response so that it's going to be the sync so i'm returning the response so that we can get the response here so i can have a let response or i can simply say const response is equal to i can use the inline if statement if it is equal to then do the create otherwise do the update like this and everything is fine now next is we need to work on the update so we have the update and this one is a patch request but along with that we need the id also slash um, it's going to be edit transaction dot underscore id with a patch request and there's a form everything is absolutely same okay so we have done that and now if i try to update it it should give us update but we have some it says uncontrolled what is this we can tackle this later but for now whenever we update click on update instead of movie 2 i can say 2 like this and click on update you can see it says patch request not found yes we have not created it but if i open the network tab i can see the payload i'm giving is movie updated and then uh, this we have to store on our database or update on our database let's do that on the server and on the mongodb now's the time for the real update api so let's go on here on the back end that means on the server end so server we have the routes transaction api this time we need to work on router dot patch and this is going to be once again similar to the delete one because we need to accept the id and then we will update the data for that particular transaction with the id then we get the request and response and this has to be async because we will do the await part and now there is the update one function delete one is the example we have already seen so similar to that we need to do the transaction dot update one now we know that we can get the id by this so we have to find first like this and then in the second parameter we need to provide what we want to set so here we will say dollar set and all the object we want to set so we know we can get the data like request body is actually giving me all the things we want to update so i can simply say setting request body which will have all the data now i say response dot json with the message of success once again okay so this is this seems like everything is fine 
let's try and see if it is really working or not something bad happened what happened okay so i think it is uh, taking time to start yeah this is uh, taking time to start while this is taking time what we have is this uncontrolled behavior so this is happening because if i go on the component on the transaction form we are saying that if this is un not equal to empty object instead of this if we can say if there is amount is not undefined that means there has to be some amount which ensure that this edit transaction object is not empty then this is going to work and you can see it's working and everything is fine let's try to update movie 2 this time i will use 2 like this click on update and nothing happened hmm seems like it happened and it really updated with a success message but since it has updated it should be converted to 2 when i reload the page and yes it is there so let's just do the real uh, update on the form so you can see we are doing uh, we are fetching the transaction it should fetch the transaction but it is not fetching it again hmm so that's this is not good after this if response is okay so everything is fine we are returning the response and okay so we are having this create we are having this update so let's do one create and see if really we are getting any update hmm you can see it has to be uh it has uh, something bad happened once again so it has to be uh, submit by default it's not having a by default which is once again the same problem because here instead of this we need to say dot amount is not undefined and here it will be like dot amount is equal to undefined okay like this and yeah it's done so let's try to create one once click on submit you can see it is not still or not updated so we are having some issue on our server server says something is undefined what is happening here So on the network tab, if I can check by seeing this, if I can click on submit, it failed because it is having no ID. Still, it is sending update request. Once again, remember what we have the issue everywhere is because of this edit dot amount is equal to undefined if it is undefined then click on create okay so one last time yes it is done with no error reload the page and this is good so maybe what we can do we can move this thing into a new function and i call it function called um, reload <laughs> something like that and this will give me the response and I will get that and instead of returning I say reload with the response because I want to do this again and again that's why I have created this function which is doing the same thing okay finally if I click on edit I say edited click on update yes you can see it is updated so let's just do a delete part yes it is deleted nice move it to back with a 2 as a number click on update yes it is updated everything looking very nice and it is really really amazing to see how our crud is finally working with this mern stack react express but but we have a lot of things to do here 
Now let's work on the login form. So if I click on login, it should redirect me to slash login. But right now, whatever we say on our address bar, it's still loading only the single home page, which is app.js. On the, on the client side, you can see like this one. So this means we need to work with React Router. So let's work with React Router. And here we are. So let's click on tutorial. And here we have to actually install React Router DOM only. So copy this and uh, go to the client side. So here we are. And run this React Router DOM. Okay, once this is done, what next? It says that you have to add a router. But how it's going to work? wherever you have the react dom create root you can use the router provider with the router you have okay so in our client side the source we have index.js where we have the react router dom we are using react strict mode and then we are using this app instead of they are saying router provider so let's have this instead of our app so i paste it like this and i need to import it i don't want app i want these things react router dom like this okay so router provider is done what next it says that you also have to create a function which is going to return the router called create browser router so this is what we are providing and here on the slash that means the home page when we go on the localhost 3000 it will return me hello world so let's go to localhost 3000 and here if i go on localhost 3000 you can see i'm getting hello world but instead of hello world i want to actually give the app we have the component app so let's have this one and let's import this import app from slash app now this will give me the exact page so what is the benefit of this now we can move over and start working on any other route so just by this we can also say that if we go on slash login it should return a login component we don't have that login component so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a pages directory and inside that it should be directory actually pages inside that i'm going to move all the component that is connected to the route or any path so this app is connected to the home page so i will call this as home instead of app so i will call it home so now you have to see this will become home okay so after this i have to create a login.js and this will just give me this login okay so let's import this login also and which is imported so now you can see this is working because this has now become the home page but if i go on slash login yes it is working right here but this is not that thing what what do you mean by that thing <laughs> i mean to say whenever i go to any login page i should have this uh, nav bar that at that place i don't want to start from the scratch so in that case i can move back this home page to the root or inside the source and then what i'm going to do i'm going to make it once again app so this become app and now here we have this app and i'm going to make this login as the child component of this so how we start with this here we say children and children will be this thing okay so children will be the new login what is the benefit of this let's see so initially we should get the app uh, we are having some issue so app is coming from here that's good uh, 
So let's see what we are getting in the console. So it says route.map is not a function. Hmm. So this has to be children, I think in an array. So now it is working. So what if I go to the login? Yeah, login is again giving me the same exact thing. It should give me this login. So we need to tell our React that you need to output the router related component, not this component. How do we do that? Let's go to the React router and here you will see that, yeah, we need to say that this is the root element which we are calling app. Then after that, we can see we have, this is error page. <laughs> yeah, this one. So it is having another, but after that, they are saying that nested route, nested route is something like this, which we have already created. But for the nested route, you need to use the outlet. So this will comes inside the root, which we are calling as the, we are calling as our app. So inside this app, we need to use the outlet. So I'm going to say after this app bar, this is going to be the outlet. So copy this. And after this, it's become outlet. Okay. So now this seems to be having login here. You can see on the base URL, we don't have anything, but on the login page, we can see we have this log in. But when we go on the home page, then what's going to happen? So instead of this having path at the root, I can say that this start with like home page and home is another component which I create inside the pages directory because this is a home actually home page. So this is done and let's import the home page like this. And now you can see when I go on the login, I have this login here. When I go on the home, it's home. So yeah, like this. So this is happening because we are saying that, yes, you have to render this app, but inside the app, if we change anything as a route inside the children, then whatever is the component of the children, just put that here. Now, we want these things to be from here to the home page. Okay, so let's use it like this. And I think I don't need because we have the container and let's import all other things which we need. So we need the container, then we need transactions like this. And then we need these states like this and use effect also here we are so use effect and use a state we need to import and finally this transaction fetching the transaction everything is here and everything is nice now our app is just handling the different different uh, you can say different different components for different pages with the app bar so that means app bar is always going to be there no matter which page i am in so this is how we work on the react router dom okay so that's good let's see if everything is fine or not and it's not because this is having the difference of the path so this means we need to go up a directory and then we need to go on the, let's say we go up a directory. Oh, so that was correct. We just need to go up a directory. And yeah, you can see I'm here on the transaction. If I go on the login, okay, so I can go by here. So login is here. Now we just need to make sure when we click on the login button, it will move to the login. So how we can do that? We can do that by using this link tag. So from the react router DOM, we can get the link, which will give me, uh, which will move me to the different uh, page. So uh, we can go to the app bar, app bar. And here we have this uh, login button. 
and we can put this login button inside the link tag which we get from our react router dom so import link from react router dom like this and then just provide the two part as slash login simple so if i click on expenser it should give me it should move me to the home page so here we have expenser and like this and it should move me to the home page and okay so we have some issue here <laughs> can we do something like this okay that's working yeah that's good so we have the typography and uh, we don't need this icon which we are having so this is good and now if i click i'm on the home page if i click on login i am on this uh, login page it has to be color of white uh, maybe if it's working so white is not there so we can get back with the inherit inherit and we need to give a class name so that the link is actually creating a anchor tag so if i save this we are going to get back our page and now you can see it's actually creating a anchor tag for us we need to give a class to this anchor tag so this is the class and i'm going to say white uh, text is white this class i will provide both places like here and then i will go on the index.css and then i say hey there is a text white class and whenever i add it you have to give color as white text decoration as none and that's it get back with the original thing so expenser homepage login is login let's work on the login page now before working with the login let's just have a register button or register page where we can register new user so that we can have the login so first we have to create another children route called register and this will be like register component and why we have two times i don't want that okay so let's create a new page called register.js and here we will create the register page okay so let's see how this is looking so first import it and go to app bar and add another button for the register so login and register is here so if i click on register it should lead me to the register page and click register yes we are here but let's design this and this time i don't want to waste the time so i'm going to use the template given from here and we have this sign up and let's click on raw copy everything and go to the register component we have paste it and since we are not using typescript so we don't need that and also this one okay and let's convert this to register button or component actually now we don't need any theming part we don't need theme we don't need copyright so remove the theme like this remove this copyright component and let's see how this is going to look okay looking good we don't need remember forgot password and sign up so this is sign in what i'm doing this is not the sign in okay anyways so we can move this thing to login because this is we need it is sign in so we will take care of this sign in later but for now let's just move to the sign up so both are sign in actually hmm that's not good hey do we have the sign up yeah we have the sign up also okay so let's go to the sign up.js click on the raw and we have it 
so paste once again and this time once again remove these things which we are not using and copyright and call this function as register okay now let's see <laughs> this is good first name last name email password and i don't want this checkbox i just want this one but it should lead me to the login page okay so first i don't want that checkbox so we have checkbox checkbox yeah so this is the checkbox this whole grid i don't need for the checkbox yeah so now checkbox is gone and this will give me the two part to slash login and the link we have is not from the material it should be from the react router dom and uh, default what happened here with the link thing there is no variant in the link uh imported as react router dom okay so i think this is not the default one and yeah this is good but i think what i want is i want to have the link from material but also i need to have link as router link from react router dom so react router dom what is the benefit of this let's let me show you so i'm going to wrap this with react router dom link and now i say two part is slash login and this is not going to work and yeah this looks good and now if i click here it's lead me to the login page which is here so let's just remove this read me remember me from the login also so don't have account and uh, yeah here is the forget password we don't need forget password and we don't need the remember one and just like before we can also want to have as router link which should come from react router dom and now router link will be similar to this two part of slash register and boom see we have this so register login register yeah now this is good and what we need we need to fill these things and we need the data on our console we have some issue it says a cannot be appear of a hmm. anchor is cannot be appear of anchor so we have two anchor one which is created by router link another is created by this uh, link so can we change it like component as span how about this this is on the login page so let's go to the login page reload they see we don't have any issue but on the component uh, on the register actually i call it component as span and reload boom that's gone so we decided that hey the link component inside that is not going to be anchor it's going to be the span anyways so when we click on submit it should create a form and we have the handle form here which is actually handing form in a new different way this is using the javascript form data which is taking care of email and the password but we have more than email and the password we have first name first name then we have last name then we have password and then we have email so this is first name last name email and password so first name is this last name is this and all of these are here so that's good let's try so sarthak s email is sarthak at bitfilms.com password is anything 
click on sign up and boom you can see all of these things are here just the first name and last name are not here maybe we have some issue here so what's happening here password is good email is good text field last name with a capital n hmm so that's the point so it's it should not be email it's the first name and the last name so like here capital n capital n okay finally if i click on sign up you can see everything is filled up cool so we need to send all these information to our server this means we need to go on our server and let's close the client on the server let's create another api file which is i'm going to call auth dot or auth api dot js with a capital a and just like here we are having these things let's do this once again and now i say router dot this is going to be the post request to create new user or register a user so i say slash register and here i will just going to return response dot dot json as message uh, user is created and let's have request and response like this so just like this default router we are sending this and once we are done with this go to the server and just like this we will say this is going to be the auth with auth api and we need to import it like this and that's done okay so now we can first test this by sending the request so open the client and we have a page which is register js and now instead of console log i will do the fetch so this is having um, i can say the const form is equal to all these okay then i say fetch http colon local host colon 4000 slash auth slash register why slash auth remember on our server js when we are registering the auth route we said it's going to be the slash auth and after that the route is register so auth slash register okay so now let's go here and then we need to say that this is a method of post and then body is going to be uh, json dot dot stringify of our form okay once we have this so we get the response and if response okay then we say console dot log or simply say log of uh, hello <laughs> or success actually okay let's see open this we already have the data click on send uh, so we have submitted but uh, yeah we are returning it it says that uh, everything is fine so it should give me response console but it's not giving that hmm, yeah because i need to do the await part here i forgot to do the await so this is a sync function and then await everything is fine now if i say sign up you can see i am getting success okay so this is done and what next we need to see all the data on our backend that means here we want to get all form data then we need to hash the password then first we need to check if user exists with same email and then if not then hash the password then store user store user that's good let's do that to fetch all the data and see if we are getting it or not so let's do the console log of request dot body and we have the server running here let's click on sign up 
and we are getting nothing okay so why we are getting nothing let's see on the register so the problem is headers we need to give headers of content type as application json if we do this then if we try to see sign up yes we have all the fields available here okay so now we have all the fields so we can see we have first name last name email and the password so that's good what next check if we have the user so we can get the email from request dot body and now we need the user model because how do we interact with the users so let's go here on our server end so what i'm doing here <laughs> so let's go on the server side go on the model and just replicate this transaction with the user model and now it become user schema so user schema and the model name is user and this will give me first name as a string then comes last name as a string yes we need the created at then we need the email and finally we need the password but we need more from that all these fields are required so what we have to do we need to say hey the type is yes a string but it's required so that we whenever we type something it's uh, not going to complain that hey this is empty so now required once again and uh, i think i need to copy copy paste copy paste that's good so whenever we try to add something it's going to say hey this is required if you want you can provide the error message like first name field is required something like that you can provide it here okay so last name field is required email field is required like this okay and password password field is required okay finally we don't need this created at because we are going to say that time stamp is going to be true so mongoose model will always going to give me the updated at and the created at fields okay since we are done with the user model let's go to the register route we have created and here we need to first check if we have the user with that email or not so first thing is like we need to destructure from the request body and we say const user is equal to await of user model and make sure we import it from the import user from we need to go up a directory go in the model say user.js which is very important and now i say dot find one i'm going to find only one with the email we have provided this one now let's try to log and see if we are getting the email getting the user or not so yeah we are here click on sign up and it says null that's really great so if user is there then we say we will say response dot uh, json and uh, we provide a message of user already exists okay but we also need to give the status so i say status is already there so what should be the status to understand that we can go and say status codes and this is a very nice website which will give a, give you this thing so it is actually not acceptable or conflict you can use any of them it just up to you so i will use the not acceptable which is 406 so 406 is the status code if user already there but if not there and i need to just return and actually terminate the function but if user is not there then we need to create the user so i need to say const i can call it check 
user or like or maybe user exists so like this and then we create a new user by using once again await user dot uh, not dot i just provide the empty object and then i say const uh, user dot save we need to do so uh, response or i can say saved user is equal to user dot save and this is going to give us the result because we said that on our user model that all these things are required let's see what's going to happen if i save this like here okay so once again click on sign up and this time it says that user validation failed which is really we want and all the message we have is right here right now that's good so now this is ensuring that we will not able to create any user if we are missing any field now we need to just say request dot body we are sending all these things or if you want you can just validate these things and like just password first name and the last name and then you can provide all these things like here okay so this is going to work so saved user is there and finally we can say uh, we need to hash the password okay so how do we hash the password because password is right here so i can create const hashed password and uh, how do we hash the password so let's comment all these things because this is the time to hash password we are going to use the bcrypt library which is going to be helpful to hash the password so i say bcrypt npm so here we have let's install this on the server it's very important so install it and how do we actually encrypt the password it says like this so first get the uh, bcrypt import it then create some kind of salt then we have a my plain text and some other plain text which is like this so basically we need to say bcrypt dot hash plain text then give the salt and then uh, some function which is going to store hash password in your db or you can use the uh, i think uh, await also yeah so we can use this like with await so hash sync is also there so i like i like this one so really good so have it first this is the one and i call it hashed password this and just log hash the password and import the bcrypt import bcrypt from bcrypt that's good and make sure these are await await and what is my plain text password so it's just the password and what about the salt const salt round is let's say 10 is just for the security reason and making the password strong okay so let's once again go to our server and click on sign up yes you can see we have this hashed password so now when we store the user we say hashed password is the password you need to use okay finally save the user and console log the saved user i think saved user and then user is created with the status of once again what is the status so it is status is 201 which has to be created it's not given here but it has to be uh let's say 201 yeah so here is 201 created given okay so where is that 201 everything is fine let's finally click on sign up and it says pending i forgot to use the await so this time what's going to happen let's see do we have the user in the database 
okay so we are not having it once again click sign up you can see we are not getting anything it should return the user already exist so let me see if i click on sign up 406 user is already exist yes it's there that means our user is already created in the database so time for the login a lot of things we did and i just want to recap this for you so i'm getting all the data from the request body then finally we are checking that if user is already exist or not so if user is already there then we are doing nothing we just terminate the function register function finally if we don't have the user then we first hash the password and then create the user with this hashed password and then finally we save this password and we log uh, we just return the user so we just have to do something like this okay and say that user is created on the user model we have these required fields and the type which we have given and also the timestamp we will see when we fetch the user we will see that the created at and the updated at will be there wow so much amazing thing we did this uh, video and let's now work on login finally is the time for the login so click on login and here we know that we have sarthak at bitfilms.com as the email and the password is i think the password i forgot what password i have used but what if i click on sign in Hmm, nothing is happening because we have some issue okay so let's just reload this and reload this page we don't have anything we say password click on sign in everything is good now open the client side with the source component login page and here we have once again this as the form data and we can say const form is equal to getting the username uh, email and the password then finally we need to do the fetch http colon local host colon 4000 slash auth slash login with the method of post and then the body is going to be json dot stringify of the form and remember we also need the headers so content type is equal to application slash json okay once we have this then we get the response and this is going to be the await process so it's going to be the async and finally if we are done with this so if response is okay then we say console dot log of uh, done <laughs> okay so this is good but uh, let's try this so if i click sign up hmm, not found because we don't have that uh, uh, route for our backend or api for the login so we need to create the api now router dot post for slash login and here we get the response uh, request and response and finally we will do the thing and we know we get the email and password from request dot body once we have this we need to first check if user exists with this email we already have the data so why don't we write just copy and paste so it's simple we say that hey it has to be a sync first so hey user find with this email if not exist you say that credential not found i can simply say credentials not found and after this we need to verify the user password if this is right or not how do we compare so it says that compare sync and a simple compare is also there yeah so compare uh, plain text and the hashed one and this is going to return the promise so i can say const uh, matched 
uh, what they call they'd call it nothing <laughs> so await bcrypt dot compare first the normal password and second the hash password so if there is a user that means we should get the user dot password okay so if we say this is not going to match because it's going to return either true or false as the result so i can say matched if it is not that so then i'm going to return once again the similar thing credentials not found but if user is there password is right then we need to create the jwt token how do we create the jwt token create jwt token for that let's use the jwt npm library so which is called json web token so let's install this on our server so here we are on the server and how do we create so here we can go we need to import it then we we just say jwt dot sign foo bar or whatever data you want to provide and then some secret okay so this is the normal behavior so that's going to be the secret and the data we want but what kind of data we can put inside this jwt so we can put full fleshed user inside the jwt it doesn't uh, going to affect us so how do we do that it's very simple as we know it says import json or i call it jwt from json web token okay then we say const uh, token is equal to jwt dot sign and here we provide the data and there has to be some secret uh, secret like this later on we will do these things in a dot env we will move all these data into the all these all these logic into the controller we will do that later on but first we can see we have very nice little token so let's just try to log this token and obviously return response dot json actually with the status code we want status is going to be 200 which is normal and if we want to have the 200 we don't have to provide it the 200 is the default one message successfully logged in okay and basically we need to provide the token also so we can say the token is the token okay so let's try to see how this is going to work so let's go and see the email is this password is 234243 and clear everything Let's click on sign in and now it says credential not found why is that hmm so user exist if user exist oh so you can see we are saying that if user exists then say that credential not found i need to say if user not exist so now if i click on sign in yes you can see we are getting this long token and a message of success with the status code of 200 everything is so amazing and now we have this token that means we can do anything with this token on the front end so login is done and login is successful but still we have a very important thing what we need to send inside this token so we need to create a payload thing and payload is actually going to have a email which we already have and you can also provide the id of the user if you want so it will be like user exist dot id and if you want you can just type it as user not as user exist okay so user dot underscore id will be the underscore id here and now we provide payload as the payload on the jwt okay so this is good but you know for some reason i'm going to call it username and we will see why i'm calling it as a username here inside this so just two fields username and id and creating the jwt token is going to done with everything we want okay So when we do the real login 
in the front end what we have to do we have to store this token into our cookies so here if we go on the application tab we can see we have this localhost cookies so we can store that cookie inside it and from anywhere on this website we can retrieve that token and send it for the authentication so let's go here and first we need to go on our client side then we can open our page for login and here once everything is fine then we need to store it in a cookie so how do we use the cookie for that we need to get a simple npm package for cookie and it's simple js cookie is the one which we can use yeah this is the one so js cookie and this one is very easy so click here and go to the client side so cd into client and then paste it so it's going to install the js cookie how do we use it so once it is done then we can import from cookies from cookie uh, from js cookie and then cookie dot set okay so that's good so import cookie and i say cookie dot set and setting the token as we should get inside the response so first we need to say that const data or i can destructure the token is like await response dot json and first we can log to see do we really get token or not so let's go here click and yeah we get the token so now we just need to store this token like this so i think it's when again cookie imported and that's good now what's going to happen when we click store you can see now we don't have any cookie but if i click on sign in and now you can see the token is stored inside the cookie and if we move anywhere inside this application we will easily able to get the cookie from this uh, uh, token from this cookie okay next important thing is once everything is done that means cookie is stored look uh, this uh, user is authenticated then we can redirect user to our home page okay so how do we redirect the user remember we are using the react router dom so react router dom and here we need to search for the navigation so route is navigation and here we are we have this component for the navigate so this is navigate component but we don't want component let's search on the tutorial navigate here we have navigate anywhere else so use navigation and navigate to minus one is the thing so they are using something like this let's try this if this is working or not so import this use navigate which should be from react router dom so import use navigate from react router dom like this and then navigate to the base url okay that's done so once again we can say uh, 234243 two, and click on sign in and i'm redirected to this home page and you will see that yeah we have the cookie just like we are using the redirection on the login we also need to do redirection once the successful registration is done okay so we can get these things and go to the register once everything is done then on this part also as soon as the user is registered we need to redirect user to the home page so just like that const navigate navigate is equal to use navigate is this navigate or navigation navigate like this and this will come from react router dom 
So this is become very easy and we don't need console log of success. Okay, so this is done, but actually once we are logged in, once the user is registered, we should move that user to the login page so that after successful registration, he will be able to log in. Okay, so this is done, our login and the registration is working, but seems like we are already logged in. So user should not able to visit this login page and this login and register button should not be there. And how about creating a protected route? Basically, the home page which we have this one is a protected route. So we should not allow user to visit this page before log in. So whenever we log in the user with the correct email and the password, you can see we are having this token. Now we need to get this token and then we only want the authenticated user to fetch these transactions. So that means on this transaction, we need to write a middleware. But how do we write a middleware? How do we get the user from the token? And how do we send the token? A lot of questions, everything will be answered in this episode. So we are going to use the passport package and especially we are going to use the passport uh, authenticating with JWT. So we will going to install this first and then we will see how do we move forward. So this and also the original passport package we need to install on our server. So CD into the server, first install JWT, uh, passport JWT and then install only the passport. Okay, so how do we get started with this passport? Very first thing you need to do is create the middleware for the passport. So here we have a lot of middleware. So we say app.use of passport, but we need to import this passport. So let's say import passport from passport and then we say initialize. So once this is initialized, then we are ready to use the passport. Uh, you can say passport with the JWT and apply it on any middleware as any middleware on any route we want. So first ever thing, how do we apply the middleware? So if I go on this JWT authentication uh, for the passport, you will scroll down and then finally you will see that in any route you create, then you need to just say passport.authenticate JWT and the session. Okay, so this is the thing we need to copy and we want to allow only the users, authenticated user to, to fetch the transaction. So we add this here as the second argument and third is the real thing we want. Now here, we need the passport once again. So I say import passport from once again, the passport. Everything is good. This means all the authentication is applied. Middleware is applied. Let's reload this page. And as we reload, you can see it says, hey, it's having 500 error because it says unknown strategy for JWT. Now, what is mean by strategy? So if you go on the passport, you will see that there are lots and lots of strategy. That means basically how you want to authenticate the user via bearer, Facebook, Google, uh, OAuth, local, lot of other. So we choose the passport and we want the passport to be there. So how do we tell to the passport that, hey passport, use the JWT strategy because we are going to use the JWT strategy of the passport for that. We need to create a configuration file for the passport. Okay. Once again on the server here, I have created a empty directory called config and inside that I'm going to create a new file called passport.js. Okay. Now here we need to put all of our strategies basically for the GWT and all the code is given here. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, like here and then 
going to paste it now since we are going to use the import we don't want to use the require so what we have to do we have to first say import um, package from passport jwt and then we say const jwt strategy is equal to package dot jwt strategy and extract jwt package dot extract jwt and in that case we have to remove all these two and convert this to let and what secret we are using we don't want these two things but what secret we have used when we uh, create the token when we do the authentication for that let's go to the auth api and the secret is this one we will use that env file later on but for now we can copy and paste here some secret with a dot okay this is the done and here we have passport.use but we need to first export default default and this is going to be a function where we pass the passport and then we do all of these things inside that function so we are exporting a function where we pass the passport now how do we use this configuration we can go to the server and just below the initialization we need to first import the configuration so we say import passport config config from is config passport dot js and now i will say hey this is the passport config but it need the real passport instance so this is the passport we have initialized and then we are passing it here okay so this is done and finally we are on the passport.js so what we are doing here so first you can see if i can just uh, cut all these things so that it will become clear so we say that passport.use new jwt strategy i told you a lot of strategies are there but we are interested in jwt strategy we are providing the options which is giving you the token from the headers we will pass that later on and the secret to decrypt or we can say extract the user from the token and then we have the callback so inside this callback we are doing this thing so we are using mongodb and uh, we need to import our user model so from uh, then we can say hey give me that models and then user dot js this is the user model we are using and then we say find find by id find by id which is where is the id id comes here and then we say that if we get the user so if there is any error then give the done done means either yes or no so done with error and we say that there is no user the false if there is user then we say there is no error but there is a user so first one is for error and second one is for user but if there is no user although there is no error but there is no user also then we say that hey there is no error but there is no user also okay everything is done so what we can do we can just try to see if this is working or not reload and it's failed why is that so i think there is some issue on the server so maybe i can restart the server and server says jwt strategy is not a constructor so here on our passport configuration jwt strategy it's actually just strategy not the jwt strategy from the package okay because we already know this is a package for jwt it's just the strategy but later on we named it as a jwt strategy for our convenience now if you see the server everything is fine reload it and now it says unauthorized why because the passport is trying to see if there is any authentication token or not 
but we are not providing any token. How do we provide the token? For that, we need to go on the client side and open our pages uh, component actually and uh, yeah pages home page and here we are fetching all the uh, transactions but along with this we need to pass the headers which is going to have authorization which is bearer and the token but from where we can get the token we get the token from cookie so cookies dot get the token and we know we need to import the cookie from js cookie okay so that's again done and let's try to reload and you can see we are having this uh, list of the transaction but what if i remove this token so to remove the token, we can have a logout button here. So open the app bar and just have a button called logout and then we say on click. Click. We need to say logout and logout should be a function which will be like here log out and the first thing we need to do is import the cookies from js cookie and then remove the cookie so cookies dot uh, remove yeah and remove the token cookie and after that we need to redirect user to the login page so we say const navigate is equal to use navig uh, I can copy uh, I can get from use navigate and like this and finally I say navigate to slash login and this is all about the logout so we can see we are on the home page we are having the token click on logout there is no token we are on the sign in page or login page now if I try to open the expenser this is you can see we are not having the transaction because user is not authenticated let's try to log in so here we are 243 243 sign in and you can see this time since we are logged in we can easily get the transactions well that's great we have done with the registration login persisting the session on the login or authentication with the token but next point is you can see it's not good even if we log out yes we can not get the transaction but why we want the user to visit this expenser page if user is logged out we need to do something for the front end also that means middleware on the react side just before moving forward i just want to change this from find one to find by id and in this case i am just going to say it's going to be jwt dot underscore id because this is what we have on our uh, like if we go on auth api if we see here we are passing this username and id we don't have any sub thing inside the payload so that's why we are using this id that's it and now let's forward let's move forward <laughs> Before creating the middleware in the front end, let's work on the .env file for client and for the server. So basically what we want, we want to have a .env file where we provide the API URL which is http colon slash slash localhost 4000 and then wherever we are using the fetch just like we are doing that on the home page. So here we are. So instead of this, we want to have the process.env.api URL and this we want to do. So if I try to do this thing and you will see it's not going to work. And if I do that, uh, click on network and you can see it says undefined 
localhost slash undefined so basically it's not getting that api url so how do we do that there are two ways to do one is you can use the dot env npm module so if i say dot env npm here is the one we can use this one or if you are on react then you can just prefix any env with react underscore app underscore and then you can use this name here like this okay so if i do that then if i reload you can see uh, this time it says asdf um, basically we need to restart my server because i was trying this env thing so now if i reload yes you can see now it become localhost 4000 so whenever you made any changes in the dot env you need to restart your server and make sure whatever you provide is prefixed with react underscore api underscore url so just like this we can do same on various other places like on the login page we are using it right here and make sure it's a template literal like this anything else no so let's go on the register out and once again do the same thing and like this okay so this become good and now since we are having these things we have the transaction form so inside the transaction form also we have to do it like this okay similar to this here on the update part yep we are done with this and on the transaction list when we delete or update when we delete yeah so this is for the delete and update we are doing uh, on transaction form which is already done so everywhere we have done so now let's search http colon localhost colon 4000 we only have on the env file that's good on the client side this is done for the client side what about the server side on the server side yes we need to use the dot env module so copy this module and open a new terminal cd into the server install the dot env and once this is done then we need to import the dot env here so import dot uh, env from dot env and let's see what we have to do next so we need to create the dot env file once again on the server side also so dot env is here that's good so it says that you need to require the dot env then you need to call the config so since we are using the import we did this dot env and after that we can say dot env dot config like this okay so that's simply done and if that is done you can see it is given and you can do something like this also everything as dot env and config and do all of these things okay next what we need and where we need the dot env once again if you go on various places let's start with the config in the passport config we are using this secret so why can't we do this secret from the dot env so we can say process dot env dot jwt secret okay so let's open this and say jwt underscore secret is equal to this thing okay so that's done anything else we are using no so there is no hard code now on the database mm, yes we are using this username and the password which is for our mongodb and uh, basically we have a lot of other things like this url um, this one mongodb so let's have all these things so if we say first const username is equal to process.env dot mongo underscore db underscore username 
similar to this it's going to be the password so i say password and finally uh, what what is this url or what <laughs> so basically we are having all these things so let's open the env file for the server and we call all these things and paste it then for the password paste it and then for the url and paste it okay let's start with the username so username is this one and now instead of this i can say give me the username so which is this one okay now make sure it is a template literal like this then we have the password so we call it with the password so once again password is there and what about the url so at the rate url is this so at the rate url is this one okay now everything is done once again on the database part what about the model okay so inside the model we don't have any other thing which is using any uh, magic string so here also we have yeah this is a secret so we can say process.env.jwt underscore secret anything else which we can replace with the dot env thing uh, that's done here we are using jwt everything is fine yeah so that's finally done with all of these things let's see if there is some error yeah there is a there is a lot of error so we can restart the server to see what exactly we are doing wrong so it says that uh, hmm, jwt required a secret or a key so basically jwt secret is not there so we need to go to the passport configuration and here if we try to log this it's not getting it so you can see it's undefined mm, this is not good so we need to go on the server and we can see that yes we are calling it so we can simply solve this by saying like hey uh, we need to use the dot env here also so we can do the same thing here like import the dot env and then configure it is this working yes you can see this is working on the passport configuration okay so that's good but this time we are having unauthorization because the front end is not getting the token hmm so what happened on the front end so if i go on the home page here we can see is this having a correct url yes it's having correct url do we have the token no we don't have the token so we need to first do the login so 243234 two, three, whatever it is and yeah we are getting the token everything is fine and uh, we do the logout we are logged out everything is working absolutely fine okay so there is no error anywhere else and this is how we add the dot env and uh, which is separating all the magic string to protected place where we have everything okay so that's done and now let's really work on the middleware now we need to restrict our user to visit this expenser page if i am not logged in so even if i do the logout i can visit this page easily this is not good so let's see how we can do that so first we will go on the client side and here we have index and inside that we have these routes so first thing i am going to do is i'm going to create a new directory called routes and inside that i'm going to create index.js or if you want you can directly create a file called routes.js so anyway you can do that but i'm going to use something like this and move all these routes from there to here 
and obviously we need to say export default so export default is this router and uh, we can directly say something like this now we need to import each and everything we need so all these components should be here and these should be i think these are right yeah then we need the app and the react router dom so yeah and we don't need this provider here everything is good here and uh, now we need to import our router so import router from the router dot js file so we are back with the same position but all the logic for the routes is now available on our router dot js file okay so here what i want to do i don't want anyone to visit this home page if that person is not logged in but the question comes how we determine that the people or the user is not logged in or logged in so the first thing we can see is if we are logged in like this then at that time we have the token on our cookie so we can check this if there is a token then yes user is logged in so at the top i can simply say const uh, cookies so i need to import the cookies so cookies from js cookies and uh, i can simply say token is equal to cookies dot get for the token now if i am here and i say if token is there then show the home page otherwise show the login page this is the very very basic so let's go here reload this page and yeah token is there so it's working now what if i change the name to token to anything else and uh, you can see now token cookie is not available so what if i reload this page you can see it instantly moved to the sign in page this is exactly we want so if i am still trying to visit expenser it's not doing that it's uh, showing me the sign in page but still even you can see it is having the home page the component is changed so you can see login is having this slash login so what exactly we want we want user to redirect to the login page when the user is not logged in or i can say the token is not available so how do we do that thing so for that let's go to the react router dom and here we need to search for the redirect or maybe a component so here we have a lot of components and uh, the one we need is this one navigate so navigate is a component which we can use to move any uh, move user to any other route so we can use this one very easily and uh, then we can instead of log in component we are going to use the navigate from the react router dom so we can say navigate is here slash login and that's good so this time if we check and if i try to visit the expenser you can see i'm on the login page instead of the home page it's not making me to visit the home page and if i get back the token like this and now if i try to hit the expenser hmm, so maybe i'm on the login reload go and yeah you can see i am easily able to visit this expenser page because i am logged in but this is not the 100% foolproof way of logging in because even if i change the token then also it's saying that yeah user is logged in which is not good so we need to validate that this token is correct before validating i just want to do one more thing i want to create one auth uh, you can say 
top level component which is going to wrap this uh, home page or any home page or any component which i want to be protected so in that case we don't have to do this uh, authentication logic inside of this routes so what i will do i will go on the front end that means on the client side and here i'm going to create one more file uh, directory called utils and inside that i'm going to say auth or uh, maybe i can call it check auth.js so this file is going to be responsible for taking the component and checking if the component or checking if the user is logged in or not so how this is going to work first we will get the children children is actually the component we will going to pass inside it and then we will go and simply render children like this so what is the benefit of this you will see right now so if i go on the routes instead of doing all these things i'm just going to comment it so that i can use it later and now i will say hey there is a component called check auth check auth and inside this i'm going to have the home page okay like here so i think i need yeah everything is fine now what i want next is let's see if this is working or not so if i go yes you can see it is working and that's really good and because this check auth is not doing anything right now but since we know we have this token logic so let's move this token here and also this cookie like here and now according to this token i can do the check for the authentication now if i go i can do this now instead of home i just say hey render the children and then obviously we need the uh, navigate from react router dom so navigate is this it's very simple what we are doing we are creating a top level component which is wrapping this component which we want to render now if everything is fine user is logged in then go and render the children or the component is inside this check auth otherwise navigate user to the different page yes so you can see if i click on home page or maybe on expenser i am redirected to the login because this is not having any token now if i just log in and you can see now i am able to move into this expenser page that's the way we can do anything for our uh, authentication so similar to check auth like if user is logged in then we do something we can do another for not check auth or we can say guest so this one will be the check auth another will be the check guest so login and register will only be visible when user is not logged in so inside this just like we have check auth we can also create a guest so guest component is exactly same but this time it's going to be the opposite so not of whatever the logic we have okay so it's similar to that so maybe we can just say guest and we can move this like here and we need to import this guest so check auth and guest okay so here we have the guest and similar to this we can do that on our register now register and login will not be visible or we will not go inside the login and register if user is not logged in so that means we need to redirect to the home page which is the authenticated page okay so right now i am logged in if i try to visit the login page you can see i am not if i try to visit the register page i am not able to do that but if i log out yes i can visit the login and the register page but not the 
home page or not the expenser page so we have created very nice middleware kind of things with the use of top level domain but still our logic of uh, authenticating the user is not foolproof so whatever we are doing here first is we are repeating ourselves with this uh, token thing and the validation and second we don't want this just having the token so how do we do that so there is a very nice way of doing it let me show you you know the only way to validate a token is to send this token to the user uh, to the server and then see if this is a valid or not we can do some kind of verification of this token on the front end but that's not that secure so what we have to do see we have on our utils we have a check for authentication now this is actually a component so we can basically use any react thing here we want so what i want i want to have a use effect and let's import this and here i want to fetch user and fetching the user will only going to work if we have the valid token so let's create a function called fetch user and here i will say this is going to be the await of fetch with the process dot env dot react app api url slash user and uh, this is going to be like here but along with this we need to send the token on the authorization header so authorization is going to be the bearer and the token we already already have the token so let's move the token at the top and then we are done so now just make this a async function and we are calling this async function in this use effect which is going to run only once so let's see if this is working or not so now it's uh, working but it's uh, saying that not found because we don't have any route for the api on our server so go to the node and the server we have to create another uh, api which is going to be the user api and this is going to be similar to this but with some all with some other things like first we need to say router dot it's going to be the get request for the user and uh, since we are going to use this on our server end so instead of writing as a user i can write slash and here we can define that hey this is going to be the user and then user api will be like this and yeah so that's done now this is good and we get the request response and we just say response dot json and this is going to be user but how do we get the user so since we have the passport installed on our backend and this is the middleware we can add this middleware which is going to authenticate our token and once we have the token then we will get the user in from our request so this is how we work on the backend now this is done so we need to import the passport also import passport from passport that's done reload and now you can see we are getting the user that's really really amazing so since we have the user what we can do on our front end with the check auth component we have created let's create a state so i say use state and we call this like here and i say is authenticated initially it's going to be the false but then i say const response and i say if or simply i say set is authenticated and uh, response dot okay is the thing if response dot okay is true then that means is authenticated user is authenticated otherwise user is not authenticated so instead of token i can just say is authenticated and do all our logic 
okay let's once again try reload and uh, it says uh, it's going to maximum update depth exceed so something bad is happening and we can see we have the token but it's keep on loading loading and loading why this is happening uh, let's just explore so it says that uh, component call set state inside use effect but use effect either doesn't have any dependency array or one of one, one of the dependency change on every render so basically what is happening let me just close it otherwise it's going to be keep on working so this is changing the check auth which is triggering this use effect again and again and again so that is creating the real issue so instead of using this navigate as a component we have another thing from the react router dom which is called redirect so at, as soon as we say that hey user is logged in or token is valid then we say okay go ahead otherwise if the response is not okay then redirect to the login page in that case we don't have to use is authenticated state and uh, then we just going to return this children and no uh, navigate function so returning the children use effect is here we can make it inline like this and uh, everything else is fine so let's try this on our local host 3000 and uh, what is destroy is not a function where destroy is coming check auth is having error boundary okay so i think this need to have a returning function like this we cannot return that and yeah you can see it's uh, having me on the expenser so the token i have changed so maybe if i made this token a valid token and now if you see very soon we are having the the transactions and everything is working fine since we are log logged in and that is working because this you can see user is uh, uh, we are getting so first it it seems like it is taking time to fetch the user and uh, since it's taking time what we can do we can create a loader so next point is to create a use state and i say is loading initially false and then i say set is loading of true and once everything is done then i say set loading to false and i say if is loading true then just return a p tag which says that loading dot 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 so this will show me the loading until the fetching or the token validation is done so you can see right now it's loading 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 lots of time it's doing this and because there's some issue it's i don't know why it's taking so much time to fetch the user with the token see the transaction api is already done transaction is easily done but user is taking time and after that once that is done you can see we are having this page now next point is once again all the logic of authenticating the user is inside this check auth the responsibility of check auth is to just see if user is logged in then show the children page otherwise redirect to other page that's it so why we are having this in this case we need to use the react redux so that we can manage our state throughout our application and now let's install the react redux and have the state management so first thing is we need to install the react redux like this so go to the client side only this is the one so i am on the client side then install this react redux along with that we also need to install the redux so how do we do that so yeah npm install redux is the thing we need that's good and then 
how do we do that first we need to wrap our application with the provider which is coming from react redux and then we have to create a store which we will have all the state there so let's go on our index js and here we have all these things which is for our react so now let's say the provider is this and provider will come from react redux so provider come from react redux like this and yeah we have it but it need the store so we have to create the store so let's create a new directory called store and inside that i'm going to create a new file called index.js and export default store and store is just an object so const store uh, maybe i can do something like this const store is this and then export default store right now we are not doing anything we are just having this and now let's import store from our store slash index dot js so this is we are done and now let's move to the next thing so it says yeah we have done with the store then inside the store you have to create something so let's go on the quick start and the quick start says that you also need to have the react uh, redux js toolkit which is going to simplify our react redux if you have ever worked with the react redux with the previous version uh, you will see the difference and how it's making your experience of redux very easy so you need to install this one also and let's install this redux js toolkit once that is done then we have to create our store which will be like this so we have this one and copy that now paste it and it need the reducer so what is reducer is going to do so here i'm going to create more reducer but let's see first what we have to do next we have already done with these kind of things and then we need to create the state slice so basically we are going to create the dedicated store for different values so they have created it for the counter we are going to create for authentication okay so we will going to say auth.js and this is going to create a slice so let's copy these two lines paste it and here it's not counter slice it's auth slice okay then what it says that you need to name it and you need to provide the initial value so that's going to be the thing and so inside this i'm going to name it as auth and initial value of is authenticated to false and user is empty object okay next it says you need to create some reducer which is going to update the value of these initial states so how this is going to look is very simple let's just have one to understand the name okay and then we get the state this is the state and then we can do anything with our state so instead of decrement i just say uh, get user with a capital u and then i need to do user and the user will be like name is sarthak that is the only thing and state dot is authenticated is equal to true this is what i am going to do when we call the get user uh, reducer so we need to just uh, export all these things and export this reducer both of these things okay so what is these going to do with so it's not counter slice it's auth slice and now we can call this just as actions or you can just uh, uh, return all the functions you have so i'm going to return the get user function 
and return auth slice reducer okay so store is ready for auth so what we did we created a slice which is having the name with this name we are going to call this store we have the initial state and to update that state we have the function which is going to update that function okay everything is fine so what next how do we use it that's the important thing so it says that add slice reducer to the store so we have created the slice now we need to add it on our store so right now auth store is there but our redux doesn't know that there is a auth uh, auth store available for that remember on our index we have only imported this store so store is this index.js file which doesn't know about the auth so now as a reducer i say auth is auth um, reducer which we are returning you can see as a default so auth reducer and let's import it import auth reducer from the auth.js file okay so this is now connected auth reducer is now connected with the redux so use redux state and action in react component so wherever you want to use it you can just say use selector which will going to give you the value of the state and to to run the reducer functions just like the function we have in this one get user we need to use the dispatch so we will use the use dispatch okay just to check where we are going to use it we will going to use this on app.js so first i say const is authenticated or maybe i can just say auth is equal to use selector is a selector yeah selector and that will come from react redux use selector and it will give you the selector as the state and i will say state dot auth now how this is coming as auth remember on our store index we are providing it as auth and here we have given the name as the auth okay so let's just uh, see what is the value we have inside the auth so let's go on the react application open the console and here we have the object and now you can see it says the value we have is is authenticated false user is not having anything great that's good but what we have to do we also need the dispatch so const dispatch is equal to use dispatch and this will come from the once again the react redux so what i'm going to do i'm going to say use effect and inside this use effect i will say dispatch dispatching what so let's go on the application and it says that dispatching the function name and we need to call that function so dispatching get user and let's call this function and uh, it says get user is not defined so how do we do that we need to import it from the slice counter slice or basically from the store we have created so import get user user from uh, store slash auth dot js so this is the auth store and we have exported this get user and we are going to use that get user and getting the user and setting the value now let's go on the react and you can see initially it was false but after that when the use effect ran it become true and we have the user as sarthak now what we can do instead of this we can really fetch the user from our backend so now we need to fetch the user from our app.js not from our check auth higher order component this one so we have this function so let's cut this function from here because we don't need it right here 
but inside this app.js we are going to use it so we need the set loading also so set loading will be here and also we need the token so that we can verify the user and this means we need to have the cookies and we also need the user state we will do that okay so first is import the user state imported and then we are not going to use any redirect right now because it's just we want to authenticate the user and set the user if we have the response is okay so if response okay then we need to set the user but we need to set the user with the real data we are getting so if we say like user is equal to await of response dot json this will give us the real user so let me show you by doing this and let's call this fetch user function here okay so fetch user is not defined is loading is not defined which is here so let's comment on this check auth yeah you can see we are getting this user so we need to fetch uh, we need to send this user information to the store of auth store we have created so here as a second parameter we can get the payload from this and let's log the payload and here we are going to pass the user okay now let's reload so you can see still once again we are getting the user and uh, we can get the user here by saying payload dot user so now we have the full object of the user so instead of this user i just say payload dot user and authenticated is true that's really good and we already have this is loading which is we are doing initially when we start fetching then we end the loading and initially we can make it true because obviously when this page loads it should start loading and when uh, according to if user is login or not we will finally close this is loading so we say that if is loading is true then return a p tag with loading dot 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 and if not loading then show all other things or all other apps so we don't need this selector so comment that for now and now reload and you can see it's working hmm, there is one more issue with this if i just log anything you can see this log is doing two times one and two and this is just for uh, dev tools but there is two times and this is happening because of if we go on the index.js of this strict mode we can remove this strict mode totally because this is creating rendering two times and now if we see it's only going to log once so if i reload it's only going to log once but it is still <laughs> logging it two times that's a bad thing and this is because of i'm ha i have not logged on the use effect so on this use effect it's going to log only once okay so that's done and uh, what next next is we need to go on our check auth function or higher order component let's go inside this i don't want any other thing but i want this state and we use the use selector from react redux import use selector from react redux and now according to the authenticated information dot is authenticated if the user is authenticated well good go here we want wherever you want and otherwise i will say navigate and this is going to navigate to slash login make sure you import this navigate from react router dom and before checking if we right now check it will load again and again so before checking this 
you can see it's authenticated but what if i just say the token is invalid so i just cut this token from here and paste an invalid token you can see it is now redirected me to the login and since we have guest one guest one is checking for the token and token is not there then it's loading this so we can do the same logic here so we need to do no not this we need to do this and from react we need to use selector from react redux and we don't need cookie and now we say if is not authenticated so is authenticated not then show the login page or any guest page otherwise redirect to the home page so these two functions are really useful so if i reload it's uh, okay so there is some issue once again it's loading many times okay so right now i am on login page that's good so let's open the guest and log auth dot is authenticated see if this is logged in no this is not logged in okay that's really good and same if i do this log auth dot is authenticated and we need to go on the expenser the home page you can see it was false and redirected me to the login page that's good let's try to log in first log out so that i can clear the uh, token we have now we say sarthak 234243 and then clear it sign in and it should it is having a correct token but if i reload yeah it's redirected here so this is good and uh, we are working with this but as soon as we log in we need to make sure our state changes okay so let's remove this authentication these two functions are working these two higher order components are working let's go to the login page and here once the login is complete we are setting the token that's really good thing but also we need to dispatch and dispatch of get user because this is going to return me the user so it's returning the token plus user so we also need the user so go to the server side on the auth api when we do the login we return the token message and user also so user we already have the user okay now everything is good so we pass the user and it's not dispatch event it's just the dispatch so inside login i say const dispatch is equal to use dispatch and this will come from import use dispatch from react redux and also we need uh, the get user so get user from it is from our auth store then auth dot js okay so this is done and we are doing we are setting dispatching that means it's setting and we redirect user to the home page okay so click on logout it says unauthenticated finally it has to move me to the uh, login page so we will do that later but first let's try to log in so so here i am and try to log in and click on sign in you can see i am redirected to the home page that's really nice and there is no error let's work on the log out finally so we have app bar we have this log out once we remove the cookie then we need to once again dispatch and uh, we say log out maybe this is a function we have to create and uh, once again let's import dispatch from react redux and import log out from from our 
store/auth.js so let's open auth.js and create a logout which is going to get the state and now i say state uh, there is no state change yeah state dot user is equal to empty and is authenticated to false okay that's good and we are having this logout okay so maybe we can call it uh, Mm, underscore logout this is the function we call it yeah now everything is working fine so import it as logout okay so I have to export also so like this logout yep that's done and import dispatch we have not dis imported dispatch so const dispatch use dispatch and use dispatch will come from like this okay once again let's try to log out and i'm redirected to login that's great try to log in and do that yes that's working log out that's good and it's uh, working absolutely fine everything is so smooth and so clear that we are we have to proud of ourselves this is how you work a lot of nuts and bolts a lot of things here and there but we finally did that so this is done with the authentication and middleware and a lot of other things but next we need to go on our node side and clear this apis with the controllers let's do this and now let's clear up the routes we have so first we have this transaction api and we want this logic to be on the controller so i have created this directory called controller inside that i'm going to create transaction controller.js and here we will first cut this function from here and export const and we call this uh, index you can call it anything and then paste it so we need the transaction model also so transaction model should be imported and make sure we have correct import so i will say like this models transaction dot js right this is done but how do we use it so it's very simple first you need to say import everything from transaction controller everything as transaction controller from our controller slash transaction controller dot js so since we have imported everything we can easily do something like transaction controller dot index and this is the function we want to call on this place okay so you can see if i reload some issue is there it says that invalid token somewhere we have oh this is the invalid token okay now if i reload you can see it's working and all the transactions are here that's really great and we can do the same for any other places so this is for the create so transaction create so something like this it's going to be the create and do it like this that's once again done so it will be like transaction controller dot create that's done and finally we have delete so export const delete is equal to this one and delete is not allowed so we can call it destroy so this is good and transaction controller dot destroy and we have then update so let's call it with the update one so export const update is equal to this one transaction controller dot update now see this real amazing thing 
this becomes so easy to read all the logic is now moved to our controller and this controller is taking care of each and every uh, update we want to do on our our transaction model second you can create a middleware and we can call this middleware here but that's okay for now but uh, let's do the new controller for user controller so user controller dot js go to the user side and here we need this thing to be export const um, index and this is the one it need the user model so user from model slash user dot js what happened oh i think it doesn't need the user model also so now user controller dot index and we need to import the user controller so import everything from everything as user controller from controller slash user controller dot js this is for the user controller and uh, finally auth controller is there so auth controller dot js go on the auth controller and this is for the register which is having a lot of things so we can cut all these things go here we say export const register and put all these things here and what are the things we require here so let's put all of these things so that we don't need any other so yes we need this router to be here that's great and I'm going to show you a different way so we can directly import register like this from our controller so controller slash auth controller dot js and I just say register so this is more easy way of doing it instead of just calling it everything as something controller and do that okay so next is export const login and paste all these things right here and that's done and just like this we can say hey i want to do the login which will be like this okay so once again this become so clean login is there and all the logic for the authentication is here the login and the registration okay so finally let's check each and everything so yes we have it we can create one more transaction abc and click yes it's there change abcd update it's there click on delete yes it's deleted click on log out yes it's logged out and sarthak login yeah everything is working absolutely fine now what next remember on our server we are using this again and again and again so if we have to add lot of routes then it will become very big file so in the routes we are going to create index.js and then all these things we have we will go and move it inside this index.js so just like we are doing in any route file we first need to import the router from express then we need to create a router instance and then we will move these things here and convert this to router and what is the benefit of this let me show you just by export default of router and now i just say app dot use slash and our router and uh, or i can say routes routes like this and now i just need to import routes from routes slash index dot js that's it and uh, it is going to be so clean because now everything is there so reload oops something is not good so we are saying transaction api is not defined where is transaction api okay so i forgot to import all of these things which we need on our index route 
so index and paste it yes everything is now done still we have some issue it says can't find module to do, 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 router okay so this is inside the same directory so i don't have to do with the router keyword and now server is running everything is absolutely fine okay so this is how it work and uh, we have cleared a lot of things on the server and uh, this is how we work with the controller inside the express or node.js next we need to work on this thing like if we log in as a abc user you can see i'm getting all these transactions if i log out and sign in with sarthak like this still we are getting all the same transactions transaction has to be connected to the users so i'm going to remove all the transactions here and i'm going to create the transaction with the user id of the logged in user before that we just want to remove this login and register if i am logged in so go to the app bar and here we can simply say const auth is equal to use selector and use selector will come from redux and here i say state state dot auth dot is authenticated and we call it like here and then we will show according to that so if user is logged in that means it if user is authenticated show the log out button but if user is not authenticated then we will do something like this okay so let's go and i just have the logout button okay now how this is going to work so whenever we create a new transaction we need to add the user id because we know that this page is only be used by the authenticated user so go to the server and we have the controller for transaction controller and where we are creating here so just here let's just log request dot user and see what we are getting on our server so when we try to create a transaction it says undefined mm, that's not good why because this route is not behind the middleware of uh, passport so go to the routes we have transaction route and here just like we have the middleware for this route we can get we can have this route for all of these uh, routes we have created so instead of adding it here what we can do we can go on our index and here we can say that this is going to be the transactions with this middleware okay so now let's see we have some issue here what happened i think we have to import the passport yes import passport from passport okay from passport now everything is fine let's reload and yeah everything is good now this means if i go to my console and try to create another transaction send and it says unauthorized that's not good so just to check do we send uh, the are we sending this uh, token so let's go to the form and here on the transaction form submit part we have the create and we are not sending the token so let's send the token also while we do the create or update of the transaction so here i say authorization is equal to bearer and some token so we need to get the token here so anywhere we can say like const token is equal to cookies dot get the token and import 
cookies from js cookies okay that's good same thing we can do on here nice let's just save this and go and try to edit and i want to edit it click on update it has updated and now if we can see oops we have to do this log on update so let's create another so a lot of things are here oops click on submit and this time we get the user so we have the user id and we can use this user id and we can add this user id on the transaction so first we need to go on the transaction model we have and we need to add the user id also user id is going to be the number okay and this is going to connect the user with the transactions so here we say user underscore id is equal to request dot user dot underscore id and this is done so let's remove it from here and let's try to first clear or remove all these things okay so it's not deleting what happened it says unauthorized okay so when we delete then also we need to pass the token so that will be from the transaction list and on the transaction list we have a method we need to find the headers and authorization is bearer token and now const token is equal to cookies dot get of the token import cookies from uh, js cookie like this so it's going to now delete so delete working working okay let's create another one so let's click on submit and now we have some issue so that issue says that it's failed why it failed because cast to number failed value of new object so this is actually having a new object object hmm, which is like a object id so we need to go to the transaction model and instead of number we say it's going to be the mongoose dot types dot object id this will make sure that uh, if we send the object id for this field it will be the real object id from the mongodb now it's very easy we just need to say on user underscore id is equal to request dot user dot underscore id so that's the simple thing server is running remove any other transaction we have and let's say 100 movie and click on submit it's there without any error and this means that if we see the transaction here we have the user id given like this okay so let's create another transaction and then we will say ice cream and add it so it's added now let's log out and try to log in with sarthak and like this two three four two four three oh <laughs> that was the same thing so this user and now we need to get the list of the transaction only for that particular logged in user so once again on the transaction controller when we are fetching all the uh, transaction we need to say user user underscore id has to be request dot user dot underscore id so this should be the case finding with this thing so now if i go and reload you can see now we don't have any transaction but if i create new transaction movie 2 hit on submit and yes it is there so let's just once again try to log in with different user and see these are the transactions only for the authenticated user now let's add category to our transactions 
and we will going to have this kind of drop down which will have a lot of things and we can just search and if we get we can just select it that's really easy and that is with the help of this auto complete so let's have this and go to our form after our date picker we can just paste it now a lot of things we need to do first we need to import the autocomplete so it will be from the material ui and then what it need it need the value so value will be like uh, we have the form mm -mm -mm. yeah form so initial value so category is empty so value we can say it's a form dot category then if this is done then we need to set the form with the new value for the category category but we also need to spread all other form data okay so what is the initial value initial value i think is going to be the same like this and i think what is this on change and on input change let me see so options now what are options we need so we need the different categories to be selected from so here at the top we can create some categories so categories will be like uh, we can give the label first and label is uh, travel and then there is shopping investment and bills oops bills so oh. <laughs> so this is bills now we have this category here and the label is category category yes let's see how it's looking it's on the new line so we need to make sure it is first having a size and the margin also so this is good so it become the size at uh, with with the height of others matching that height and width is going to be 200 only that's good but how do we make this inline so you can see we are using this form and a native form html form so instead of that i'm going to use the box from material ui and this is going to be a type of so i will say component component is form and since this box will treat as a form so i can easily say on submit so let's import this form also uh, this box also so this is the box and remove the form because now our box will be treating as the form but what is the benefit of using it we can simply say display as flex that's good and now everything is here but why don't it don't have the margin on the right so what we can do we have the margin right here on the text field we can put that margin right on our autocomplete that's good now let's see how this is changing the behavior and i can search for autocomplete and actually i can search for the form the transaction form so transaction form inside this we have the state and state category is not having anything so let's select investment okay so it says label is investment so i don't want to have the label i say new value dot label like this so if i start from scratch so reload this page and select investment and yes investment is here that's great so we have this uh, uh, categories aligned with this uh, kind of uh, uh, form and now it's the time to submit this form with the categories so how this is going to work everything is fine but on the our back end where we are going to store this category 
is this going to be on the transaction is this going to be on the user and from where all the other categories are coming so we will going to provide user ability to create new categories so suppose user want to have their own category so it's a user connected category so there are two way of doing it yes you can use another collection for the category and connect that with the user or you can add embedded document inside of the user data so when we create new user we need to have the categories connected to that user so how this is going to work first let's go to the user uh, auth controller and here we have registered new user so when we create new user so like this we need to add new one which is called categories and this is going to be an array of different different categories so we need to go to the user model first and then we can provide categories is going to be an array an array of first an object and this is going to be the label as a string and i also want to have an icon so that we can associate the category with some kind of icon okay so this is done and what we have to do next on our auth controller we are having the categories but we need to have some categories which will be like exactly similar to the categories we have on our form so let's copy all these things paste it and just like we have this i am also want to have icon of user right now i'm having any random string like user as the icon later on we will provide the ability to change the icon only for these categories or add new category update new category anything so whenever user is registered i'm going to have the categories so i can do something like this also so everything is fine let's now uh, go and uh, register a new user so let's log out and i say a b c d at gmail.com password is password register oops it's sign in actually so click on register so abcd 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 password sign in yeah that's done password click on sign in yes we are here now how about having the categories from the user data so right now we know we have the redux and inside redux we have all the user so we can say user is equal to use selector which is going to have a state and i say state dot auth dot user and if you want you can just destructure categories from here also but first let's import this from redux import this from react redux okay that's good and now it says cannot redeclare block okay so it's we only have one category so that's why it's giving error now it's it should not give any error cannot redeclare yeah so that's done and uh, on here we are doing everything we need so it says cannot destructure property that's gone and now if i click you can see these are actually coming from our back end from the user categories so instead of giving the label we should give the id so that we can verify what uh, category we have so suppose by default a user has created two category with the same name with the same label actually so that's going to be difficult for us so we will select and add the id as the category so maybe we can also call it the form will be like category id not the category so category id like here okay so in that case this will also become underscore id good so everything is fine and let's try to select a category that's good check on the component for the state of transaction form so transaction form and state is having the category id wow that's so amazing 
so that's final and uh, this means when we store the category or when we store the new transaction actually so go to the transaction controller create part we should also add the category underscore id inside this so category id will come from request dot category id this means on the transaction model we need to add category id also and it's like category id and having the same type of id good that's done and let's try to add one more so 100 movie same but this is uh, when I, when i am doing the traveling so i just uh, spend this amount click on submit yes it is added so let's have the category on our list so let's go to the list and let's have date and before date we have the category and we can just show the category id so because we just have the id right now it's not having it why is that so let's see the transactions is not giving me the id hmm. so that's an issue so why it's happening let's just try to check on the state category id if we select yeah this has become category okay so one problem is this you can see it's on the category not on the category id and that is because we need to say category id like this okay so this is done but once again and yeah you can see now it become category id but also here it's having the category id it's showing the category id so instead of category id we need to show the name but on the form we need to set the category id how we will do that so here we need to create a function which will be like get category name by id and uh, this is going to be like when we pass the id or maybe just do this and uh, let's create this function and how this is going to work let me show you so get category by id name and then we already have the id on our form so we can just check that so we say return of this up oh, no this just categories dot find we need to find it so it's going to be the category and then if category dot underscore id is equal to form dot category id then return this and if it is available like if we find anything then return it otherwise return an empty uh, empty string okay so it's actually giving me the function that's not good so let me just see okay we need to call this function because it's a value not then event now if i choose bills so on the state you can see it is category id but here we see the real string for that one that's good finally let's create one more so 100 movies and this is your travel click on submit and uh, once again we are not having the the id here it should be like it's not stored what is happening so once again click on travel submit so payload is not sending oh it's sending actually here is the category id we are sending so why it's not storing on the transaction controller hmm so request dot body dot category id that has to be or we can just restructure from here and in that case we don't have to do anything finally let's delete all other categories we have or transaction we have not the category so one movie travel submit yes we have the id now instead of this id we want to have the category name 
we will do that later but for now yes we are connecting the id with our transactions that's really good the very first thing we need to do is to show the category name instead of the id so it's going to be super easy what we have to do we need to go on our list of the transaction and here we are showing the category id now let's create a function called category name and pass the category id and let's create it so first go at the top and create a function like this which is going to accept the id and for now let's return not available or na so you can see it become na now next we need to first fetch the user from our redux store so use selector state state dot auth dot user and use selector will come from react redux react redux okay so that's good but now what we need to do we need to filter out the categories so we say category is equal to user dot categories dot find and we get a single category then we say category dot underscore id is equal to the id we are giving so if we get any category from the user category so then we say if we get the category then show me the category dot label label otherwise show an a which is not available so this is good investment and travel super duper easy and that is the power of using mongodb since we have the categories inside of the uh, user uh, collection we can easily do whatever we want that's good but next what i want i want to have another tab here which is for the category so that the user can add his own category or delete or update the existing categories they have how do we do that so first we need to go on our app bar and here let's create another uh, button just like this button we have and maybe I can copy this link button and after this expenser I'm going to say categories which will lead me to category route we are going to create or maybe we can just call category okay so that's going to be easy reload it's not available why that's not good hmm seems like everything is good it should show us the link oh it's here on the right side you can see so that's not an issue we get it here so we need to click here and it lead me to the slash category route we don't have the route so on the front end we can create another route for slash category so this will be like slash category and remember this one is also for the user who is authenticated so check auth will be like this and category component we have to create inside the pages directory because this is a new page category.js and that's good let's import it nice so now you can see we have the category page available okay so just like we have the expenser and we have this kind of uh, uh, transaction form and transaction list if you want you can just copy the same structure or you can do something else so yes for now we can have this kind of table which will show me all the category and the icon okay so how do we set that we can go to the cat we can go to the list of the transaction we have and we are going to copy everything from there and paste it here and i call this one as category 
and this doesn't have any transaction detail because it's not a transaction so i don't need this function which is for the remove so remove that format date is okay list of categories and category label category icon that's the only thing we have next it has to be categories and this will come from the user categories so maybe we can just call it user categories user dot categories and obviously we are going to map power over it so row dot label and row dot icon that's the only thing we need and that's good so let's remove this one and for now we don't have this on click and this on click okay sounds good let's see so here is a list of categories that's great and finally let's move this inside a container and i really like the container thing okay list of categories category is this icon is this and it has to be action so this is on the header actions for delete or edit so very first thing i want to do is the delete part so when i click it should delete so let's say function for remove we get the id and then we say const response is await and it's going to be the async await of fetch for our process dot env dot react app api url slash category and we want to delete so it's going to be the method of delete and then after it's going to be the headers as authorization is going to be bearer token and from where we can get the token we get the token from the cookie so at the top we can get the cookie import cookies from js cookie that's good but this will remove will work like this so row dot underscore id that's fine and everything is good so let's try to create the api because if i now go and click on delete you can see it says 404 because not found so let's go on our server and here i'm going to create another route and that will be just for the categories although this is inside the user you can also create it like inside the cat, uh, user api but i like to have it with a different uh, api so the category api will be like this slash category and uh, this category will also be like only be accessible by the authenticated user so that's added with the route okay so one more thing we can do we can say const auth is equal to this thing and now i can replace this with auth so that it will look good and like this yeah seems like a nice thing is it working and it's not working what it says the server says something server says auth category api okay so we have to import the category api just like we are importing any other api like this everything is fine and yeah finally let's go and create the category api 
and inside this category API we have copied the user API and created this file so now it become easy by saying category controller instead of user controller so I can just say cat category controller and let's create this category controller so controller is here let's copy and paste user controller and name it as category controller good and index is okay but what i want i want to have a delete for now so let's call it destroy and how this is going to work so first we know that all the categories is inside the user collection so const categories is equal to request dot user dot categories so this will give me all the categories so let's just log the categories and let's call it with destroy dot destroy and uh, this is a delete request everything is fine yes and now let's see what we are getting so click on delete and you can see we are getting 200 and we are getting the user but on the server you can see we are getting all the array of the categories we have for the user okay that's good now we want to find or basically we want to create new categories new categories is equal to we get the old categories and then we say filter out with the category a single category and we say category dot underscore id is not equal to the id we will pass as the parameter so it will be like we are passing we have to pass the category id here id yeah so the id we are passing on the remove will will be here like this so that we can delete that now if we get the id which we can directly get from request.params.id and uh, this will give me the categories which does not have this id which we are passing and finally we say that we have a user model so import user from models slash user dot js user model dot update one where underscore id is request dot user dot id and then as a second i say set setting what setting categories with new categories so after we remove the category from the collection we have or from the array we have then we set that with the id here okay so we need to go to the category api so that we can update our route it will be like id and good everything seems very very nice and it should return the user with the await and return me the user only so making it a sync so everything is fine just make sure it's not triple equal to or triple not equal to because it's not exactly similar because this is an object id this is a string so that we are just matching like this and now let's try to remove the last one click and network tab says that everything is fine acknowledged and if i reload you can see it's removed we just need to remove this from our redux store also so let's go on the front end and once everything is fine so if say request dot okay then we need to dispatch dispatch and say uh, dispatching of set user we already have on our auth so uh, it's uh, it has to be set user not get user so let's search for get user where we have used so it is not get user it's set user okay so here also we are saying that export set user finally and 
now on our here we need to set user import so import set user from store slash auth dot js okay and let's remove these two and also we need the dispatch use dispatch and this will come from redux store uh, redux react redux and how do we set the user so first we need to update the user with the category so const underscore user is equal to user uh, spread the user and then we say that hey inside this user there is a categories but categories will be like user categories dot filter filter with cat cat means category cat underscore cat dot underscore id is not equal to the id we already have so this will give me the updated user with the updated category and we pass this user like this so we say see something like this user is going to be here so just like we did on our set user is just the user and it has to be this so i'm not sure if this is going to work so what i'm going to do before deleting i just want to check if it's really updating our store or not so here we are let's go and log payload and it says get user in auth store we already have done that get user is not available oh so here also it's going to be the set user done okay so let's try to remove the builds and you can see we are getting user and we are getting user inside it so maybe we can just say here we are we need to just say like this now what if i do something like this then i get no i didn't get anything i get the user directly so if i do this if i click on travel travel is removed so this is working absolutely fine so let's just try to delete the category and then we will move forward so click on builds and builds is removed even if i reload it's back so that is not deleted on the back end so let's once again try to delete and it says that it is deleted and yes it is really deleted so try to delete investment it is deleted reload and yeah it's working absolutely fine so finally this is done and let's move forward now let's have a form to create a category and that's begin going to be easy because we already have the transaction form and let's just rename this to category form and we will make it category form like category form okay so it will need uh, we will see what it need but for now it's going to be like this and let's import this on our category page just above this i will say category form and it has to be with all of these things so first add new category okay this is not amount this is label or title and this is once again text and small is okay label is okay form dot label about change is good next we need the list and that is going to be the autocomplete one for the icons we will do that icons so icons icons and icon is going to be the new value and icon 
that's good so edit transaction dot amount it's not like edit transaction it's going to be edit category so i say edit category okay and it seems like everything is good we need the icons let's go at the top and maybe at the very top we can have const icons is equal to a uh, array right now and this array will have a label of uh, let's say user and we will also have the real icon okay so that's good on the form as we know we need the label which is going to be the empty and icon which is going to be the empty okay so next is we need to pass the edit category from here edit category we are not going to have anything fetch transaction just for now so that we will not get any error and like this null and this is good let's now see reload now it says amount of null somewhere we are using amount okay so let's now go once again and search for amount mm -hmm. so on the use effect we are doing this so if edit category dot underscore id is there is there any other amount yeah so a lot of amount we have that will become underscore id once again underscore id okay so finally we have done and now it says reading of underscore id null of underscore id so what we can do instead of null we can provide the empty object and yeah we have a new category form that's good okay so we need to submit this form and then we will see how we can create the uh, backend so we submit the form where we have the submit and this is again same first if we have the edit then we do the update otherwise we do the create create is for category like this and everything else is going to be same instead of reload we will say reset and there's also be category and edit category and it seems like everything is good get category name is not the thing anyways we will see that later okay so let's go on the back end and we have the category controller inside this we have just the delete one let's create the export const for create a sync request response and finally we will say that we need the label and icon from request dot body okay then we will we need to update the user and updating the user with the categories we have all the categories so array and we say yeah since we need to create we have to add a new category that will be like uh, request dot user dot categories comma another where we have label and icon this is how we add a new uh, you can say category and finally let's return the response actually response and responses like this so let's try here but first let's see what we are sending so let's go on the form and before doing this let's just see what we are sending so log of form okay so reload and open the console and select so instead of sending label and icon we are sending icon as an object 
what if I just say it's a list of a string and is this going to work yeah it's working and this time we are sending icon and the label that's good so where we are logging this user we will see that later but for now it's good and finally we can send and add new category so xyz icon is user click submit it's done reload and yes it is there that's good and at last we need to reload so just go to reload and here instead of fetching the transaction we need to first dispatch and then uh, set the form reset the form so we need to first do use the dispatch then use the set user and then we will pass the user as underscore user which you have already seen on our category where we have done something like this so why not copy all these things and paste it here so what we have to do first we need the user then dispatch and set user all of these things so here we are already having the user but we are destructuring with the categories so we just say user and wherever we are using categories we can change it with the user category user dot category next just like use selector we need the use dispatch and let's create dispatch instance use dispatch and also we need to import set user from our store auth dot chase okay now here how do we add the new uh, category you can also do the push like pushing and pushing the form but it's going to be like spread the form and then it should work okay let's try this with new category and it says cannot add property 3 object is extensible whatever it is it is done here but let's remove it and once again try so what next uh, how we can do that we can do it in a different way we can simply say that this is a user categories spread all the user categories in this uh, array and then spread the form this is i think become more easy so a b c and uh, form is not iterable really so one more time yeah this is there cool so we can remove and we can once again try a b c it's done okay so we have added it but finally it's time for the edit of our category so just like we are passing this fetch uh, edit category here so fetch category we don't need but edit category we need to pass so passing from the category component so category component is here whenever we click on edit button we need to say set edit and this is just i'm going to call so we should have a set edit function set edit we get the category and then we say that let's have a new state use state edit category and initially it's empty and then we say set edit category is the category we are getting now this one we need to pass here instead of empty object and now we don't need any fetch transaction so this will become like this and now go to the category form if we have the edit category then we set the form with the edit category details so huh, we need to import the use state which is here import that's good and let's try okay so let's have this and try to update it click on update 
it actually added here but if i reload you can see it's there this is really good and now we need to do this when we do the update only so on this form we have this reload which is actually giving all these things so instead of passing the response or maybe just after the response we can also pass the user so i can just pass underscore user like this this means when i do the create i need to update the category and pass the user and when i do the patch or update then also i need to create the user and pass the user with the updated categories now this time what i need i need to first loop over the categories and then say dot map category category and uh, it will be like if category dot underscore id is equal to the id we have then return the form so return the form means uh, like this otherwise return the category we have so if this is matching then we have the form and it says id is not defined because it's going to be the edit category underscore id okay let's try this one once again travel has to be updated three click on update yeah you can see it's very smooth and update it cool so this is how we update and add and do a lot of things with the category and when i do when i go here here we have the category before moving to the end of this course and uh, before deploying i just want to have a graph here at the top which will show me the month wise expenses i have done so total amount and we can show at the top of this form so for that i'm going to use dev extreme reactive and here we have this react chart so let's go to explore component get started and since we are using material ui so they have a specific material ui related uh, library so i just want to install this one for the client side make sure we are on the client run it and this is going to work now how do we get it started it's very easy you can go on first on series and you can see we have this bar series so copy this and what i'm going to do for now i'm going to copy each and everything from here and then on the client side i'm going to create a component called transaction chart dot js and i paste it and then i will name this transaction tran transaction chart okay this is good and it's a class based component it doesn't matter if you want you can use the uh, simple you can use the function based component also and that's it this is the simple thing and let's import this on our home page above this transaction form so we have this transaction chart and let's import it that's done so let's go and yeah we have this chart let's give some margin at the top so maybe we can do something like this margin top is five and yeah we have the five but we need some more information on the graph so here we can go to the axis and then we can add the axis here so we just need to add these three things value x argument excel and argument scale so how do we do that it's very easy just paste it and import all of the component we need so like here then for this one can copy and paste it that's okay 
it is good and now if i go and see you can see we have the number properly given but what next we need some kind of animation so there is animation also and we just need to add the animation component like here after the chart and let's import this one also so animation will come from dx chart action so dx chart action we don't have so copy that paste it and let's reload yeah you can see very nice animation and after that we can also see we have the this one tooltip tooltip is give me when i hover over it it give me the information of that particular chart so how tooltip is going to work tooltip is very easy yeah just another component like this after this animation we put that tooltip will come from dx material ui so yeah like this and finally if i hover over it it should work but it's not working i think it also needs something else so event tracker okay so event tracker and event tracker is coming from dx chart nice nice and yeah you can see now it's working so we have designed the chart and uh, now what we need to do we need to group the transactions by our month and then connect that transaction data with this chart so basically we need month here and total expenses here so let's go on our transaction controller when we are fetching all the transaction let's see how we can group by so just for now i just say demo await transaction dot aggregate and in this aggregate first thing i will do is dollar match so what i'm going to match i'm going to match user underscore id with the request dot user dot underscore id so let's see how this is going to look if i just give the demo and now reload and you can see we are getting the data once again as we get from the find that's exactly similar but next we need to group so next we have to say we have the group and grouping which need first the id and id will going to be the month value with the date so it's going to be get the month from the field date we have so remember we have this date field which is like when we have added the transaction and that is showing here and which we need to fetch or group by so this is done and now if i reload you can see we have id 8 and 9 which is representing august and september the data we have here along with this we need all the data for that uh, particular month that means we say transactions is equal to dollar push we are pushing first amount which will be like dollar amount then description which will be dollar description and then we also need the date which will be dollar date like this okay let's reload and this time you can see uh, we have the transactions two transaction on the eighth month and two transactions on the ninth one along with all these things we also need the count or total expenses which will be the sum of the field called amount so that means how many uh, 
what are the expenses for that particular month so for this month of 9th we have 110 so it become 110 for the next month we have 1000 and 13000 so it become 14000 and this is exactly we need so first let's work on this graph and then we will list out the transaction according to the month so we have to go to our page like home page here we can send the data so data is equal to the transactions we have okay now here we should get the data as the prop so here uh, how do we get the prop so um, data is this one so maybe i can say that props dot data this is going to be the data and from here we need to first remove this and check if we have the correct data or not this dot state and you can see we have the data but it says data is empty so maybe if i can say props dot data like this instead of defining the state yeah we have it that's great so we don't have to create any state and we don't have to do something like this i don't like these uh, class based components i'm going to just create a functional component and then i'm going to return all these things like here and now things become super easy when i just say hey data is here okay now instead of chart data i say the data okay and now what are the fields we need so in the year field we need the underscore id and for the population we need the uh, total expenses from the data we are sending but data is in two form so first is the expense id and you can see which is populated like this so this is 14000 and this is 110 this is the only way we have to show the data but final part is here on the transaction we need to loop over the transaction we have so we are sending this transaction which is like this from here we can call it data not the transaction and then go to the list say this is the data and then first we will loop over the data so data dot map and this will give me month so each month we should have the month dot and then comes the transaction so if i can remove it and remove this move all of these things here so it will be like first data map through all the data and for each month we have some transaction and show the transactions like here okay finally you can see yes everything is fine we have the uh, september is here and uh, august is here and this is showing me like 110 for the august and this is for the august actually and this is for the september so now let's convert this number to name so first let's remove this and import dayjs from dayjs and then we create a new chart data and we say data dot map and we get the item and then we say hey i'm going to return the item but i'm going to say item dot underscore id or maybe we can create another field called month is equal to dayjs dot uh, we need to say dayjs dot month and call this month is item dot underscore id which is the month value we know and then we say format formatting with mmmm -M -M -M. okay now use this from this chart data instead of this data okay reload and it should give us if we convert this to 
month and yes you can see september october no this is not correct so what we have to do actually the djs month start from zero so we just need to decrement it by minus one and now we have august and then we have september so sometime it is uh, september is first sometime september is uh, on the last that's not good one two three four so september is there and uh, august is there and september is here wow so nice and finally we are going to deploy our front end and the back end both on different platforms so the back end the node application will be deployed on heroku right now heroku free tier is active but after 28th november 2022 you need to pay for this and that's going to be a very minimal charge so it's not going to be that much so let's first create the app and i call it bitfumes mon course create this and once this is done we are going to use the heroku cli this is going to be useful because it's so handy that you don't worry about this so first you need to have the heroku cli you need to install it via the installer or if you are on mac you can use this or you can directly run this command to have the heroku once you have the heroku you just need to go on your server and check first if you have heroku or not so yes i can see i have the heroku so i can go ahead and do the heroku login so first i do the heroku login and uh, it says press any key to open the browser so just press this and it's going to open the browser so that i can click on login button and it will saying that yeah you are logged in let's close this and then you need to do the git in it and this is super important because this is going to initialize the git repository inside of the server and since we have another git which is holding both of them so we need to actually have git ignore inside the server so that this the git inside of this server will not going to include this node.js so i'm going to remove this and say that hey this is not going to include the node.js and now you can see node.js become dull okay so this include uh, this represent that the node.js is not included finally we need to say heroku git repository is this one like here and very soon it will be done cool what next now we need to do a commit so we say git add all then after that we can do a commit and you don't have to do this but that's done and finally we need to say git push heroku master and if this kind of error you are getting then you need to make sure it is head colon master and now this is going to work and this is actually pushing everything to heroku and this is also doing the uh, deployment so you can check that on the activity section so click on the activity part and uh, you will see that something is going on here like this very soon this build will be completed and then we can click on this uh, open app to open our app and finally you can see it's done deployed so click on app we should get the hello world and let's see what we are getting here so we are not getting anything it's keep on loading and loading and loading so couple of things we need to do to resolve this thing first we need to make sure we provide that process.env.port if it is there then use that port otherwise use 4000 so heroku provide the port by default so that's why we are providing it second i'm going to call this as uh, start not the serve why because if you go on the overview and maybe on the resources you can see there is no dinos this app has no dinos why is that because you need to add a proc file to your application in order to define the process so let's have this proc file and a proc file will say uh, process type and the command so 
let's go hand here on server and say proc file not the type proc file is there and then it's a web which says npm uh, which is actually serve so we need to see what kind of web and then the command so we can simply say npm build so maybe just say serve or start let's see what's going to happen so if i say git add all git commit with a message of using proc file and once again do the push okay let's see after this what's going to happen so since we have defined the proc file it should include any dyno that means a server so once again if you go on the activity it will just keep on uh, building so once this is finished we will see that so i just did one thing is uh, i just added npm start and then i just pushed and you can see it is uh, working absolutely fine we are getting the hello world but what if i do the transactions so simple transaction it says unauthorized because you know we need to do uh, first we need to connect it with the uh, mongodb so we need to provide the envs so first env is mongodb username which is Sar uh, bitfumes not sarthak and after that mongodb password is bitfumes123 like this mongo url is going to be full this one and finally the jwt secret it's very important so that we can log in and make sure in real application you have very strong uh, jwt so all these things are done and uh, now we can trigger another deploy so that it include all these variables so how do we trigger another deploy can we run it okay maybe we can just push from here and uh, we can push heroku once again and it says everything is fine but we can just say hey i am adding added envs and it says nothing to push so maybe i need to change a little bit so something we can add so maybe i can add a new and now you can see it's going to push yeah so it's rebuilding and while this is rebuilding let's go to netlify and here inside this netlify i will deploy my uh, react application you can also check for vercel it's up to you where you want to deploy so i want to deploy with github so first do that choose the organization then just find mern and search if it's not available you need to reconfigure it so it's available boom and now we need to go inside of our client and then run npm run and what's that so check for client package.json and it's npm run build okay so npm run build and click on deploy site so while this is deploying let's search uh, let's see our uh, backend so backend is this one and if i do the once again transaction it will be reflected once we have our front end ready so let's just see how this is doing so it's uh, building our application and very soon it will be available so we are getting this error because of uh, this process.env.ci as true and it is treating warnings as error so we have some warnings which we don't care but it is doing that so once again we need to go on the settings so deploy setting is there 
and we have this npm run build so we say ci is equal to false and then npm run build and one more option is publish directory we need to do the publish directory on client slash build so whenever we do any npm run build it will create a build directory like this where you have the real project so save this and click on trigger deploy once again and this is going to trigger the deploy and start deploying so yes this is going to deploy but you know we need these env files so first it says the react api url that means where you have the uh, node so for that you need to once again go on the deploy and this time go to the environment and here we have the environment setting so react deploy uh, like node application is here inside this so we need to open it copy this and paste it that's great and click on save and then one more deploy because every time you do any changes you need to do the deployment so this is deploying our front end or the react application and let's see if this is really connected to our back end or not so finally it is done let's click on preview and if you open this and click on expenser once again so maybe on the category and anywhere you will see that we are redirected to the sign in page now let's try to log in with the account we have so password which is not two three four two four three click on sign in now it says reading category is hmm. but you can see from our back end we are getting this so this is actually problem with our application but if you try to visit you can see boom we have the application ready everything is here and if i go on category there is no category we can easily log out we can log in with a b c d at bitfumes uh, not bitfumes at gmail.com password is pass word hit on sign in and it's not doing the sign in why let's see okay so now it says credential not found abcd at gmail.com is there password is the password and once again it says so how about abc and again it says pass it's not found so the only one we have is this one click on sign in and yeah we are here but we have some issue and that issue we will be solving so you can see this is the application we already have and this is working absolutely fine let's try to add one more transaction and this is heroku heroku and category is not there so let's first create the category category is server icon is not having anything category is created and uh, once again heroku and server submit and you can see at last it's there on september now september is become 210 from 110 boom so this is how you create the monastech application and this application is so amazing so that's really great and hopefully you learn a lot from this if you like this video that will be helpful for me and don't forget to subscribe to bitfilms youtube channel and we will meet in some other videos till then goodbye